good evening friends uh, welcome to yet another episode of market mirror last week i had promised to get a successful veteran hedge fund manager and uh, here he is uh, he is jay shah co-founder on uh, one tree uh, wealth partners and also a co-founder of uh, pmscard.com which is uh, india's uh, first and zero conflict uh, uh, to conflict uh, to use pms platform where one can uh, compare and evaluate various pmss for free uh, a brief background of jay uh, jay ran uh, one of india's largest long shot hedge fund uh, under uh, edelweiss that is called the edelweiss alpha fund and he grew it to an aum of 2000 crores uh, in 22 months uh, he is uh, labeled as the india's first fund manager turned wealth creator uh he was uh, in the uh, 40 under 40 award uh, given by aiwm which is uh, uh, i understood as association of international wealth management of india basically alternate investment management uh he is did uh, done his post graduation from isb hyderabad one of the most uh, uh, prestigious institutions uh he specialized there in finance and strategy uh he has been a frequent uh, panelist on uh, prestigious conferences throughout india um the fix conference the algo convention so basically he is a quant uh, trader um so in in one tree uh, hill wealth partners which is uh, which is his own uh, company uh, jay manages about uh, 200 crores of uh, ultra hnis wealth uh, so suffice to say i don't qualify um then uh, what else uh, he says he's a guju with uh, stock market is blood Uh, please don't confuse this jaisha with another jaisha who is the secretary of the uh, cricket board mm, this jaisha is much more articulate um, and uh, probably richer than that other gentleman he has spent more than 15 years as a uh, fund manager and uh, he has traded over numerous in- instruments and asset classes prior to edelweiss um, he had a stint with motila loswal as an avp heading the uh, entire quant desk uh, he developed a long shot uh, market neutral and intraday strategies um, prior to that uh, he was with uh, ocean dial india advisory and uh, orange tree trading consultants as a portfolio manager this tree business i am not able to understand uh, maybe he'll be telling us that he was with orange tree now he has gone uh, one tree uh, so probably he'll give us some idea of what the tree is all about uh he thrived he thrives in both uh, bear markets and bull markets in the uh, market uh, before 2007 was a bull market jaisha was there to make money for him and his clients in the 2008 uh, bear market um, he made money for his clients yet once again and he caught the ensuing bull market of 2009 uh, and um, uh, the best person over, uh, to guide us through both bull and bear cycle uh during these turbulent times is uh, my friend jay uh thank you jay for joining with uh, joining us and uh, we are all eagerly waiting to understand what goes on in your mind and what goes on in a typical hedge fund manager's mind and more importantly what goes on in a veteran successful hedge funder like you uh all over to you jay thank you thank you jay for those kind words uh i'm not sure if i if i deserve all those because it's a uh, it's been as one of my uh one of my clients tells me is like that look i'm generally hiring whenever i hire an advisor or a fund manager uh, i hire them for the mistakes that they've made so that they don't repeat it for me and uh, you know just just talking about mistakes i think one of the most important and uh, misunderstood things Uh, or concepts is the concept of compounding right and i'll just start off with that and you know let's see where that goes you know a lot of people think you know, when you talk about compounding uh, you think about warren buffet you know there's so many of these quotes that look 85% of his wealth came after he turned 70 or 80 etc and while all that is true um i my personal belief is that compounding actually works on the downside better than on the upside and i'll give you a very simple a uh, mathematical answer uh, to why i'm saying this so if you open excel right and let's say you find an instrument 
which is making you 15% year on year. Let's assume for the time. It's not easy to make 15%. But let's assume that there's an instrument that is making you 15% year on year. Now, if you let it count for 12 years, right? Uh, and let's also assume that a 12 to 12 to 18% CAGR, uh, which is sort of doubling your money every five years, is a good return to have for the time being, right? Uh, let's say you are at 15% and, you know, you've compounded for 12 years. Let's say 100 rupees has become whatever multiple of, of what that 100 is. But the more important thing is that when, let's assume, after the 12th year, if the market falls by, let's say, 30%, and let's say it falls 30% in one day, right? There's a big crash, and even though we have those limits and everything, let's assume for the time being, it falls 30%. The best part about compounding is that your 15% CAGR reduces to around 12 and a half or 13, right? And what people don't realize is that a 13% CAGR after 13% fall is a very palatable number more than anything else, right? And this is actually what compounding is. And, you know, even intuitively for everyone who's been investing or has seen that, you know, uh, parents investing, etc. Uh, a lot of us feel that look, these guys are not bothered by the market movement, right? Uh, and it's exactly for this reason, where they've seen their wealth grow from one to let's call it ten x or twenty x or thirty x, such that even after a, a big fall or a lot of volatility in the market, they are not affected to a big degree. Same thing. They look, we've made enough. How does it make a difference whether it's 30x or 25x, right? It's still a significant x over my initial investment. And hence, what you know, you, you've probably heard a lot of people also say time in the market versus timing the market, right? Uh, this is the reason I think time in the market is more important than timing the market person. Yeah, I'll take a small piece on timing the market through another logical example. Right. So if you can compound over a long period of time, any significant detraction in the market doesn't change your CAGR significantly. Right. Whereas if let's say you're only invested for five years or two years or three years at a 15% CAGR and a big fall came, that 15% will reduce to 6% or 7%. Right. Uh, and that is the power, that is the actual power of compounding that people talk of. Not just that, look, after 80, you start making all your wealth, right? It's actually on the downside and downside protection more than anything else. Coming to the other aspect, which, you know, containing the same thread is, you know, a lot of people try to time the market. And, uh, you know, Vijay, you mentioned that, you know, I've seen 2007, 2008, 2010, 2013, 2014 when Modi came, 2017, uh, and obviously uh, the coronavirus time, right, where the markets fell and then has been on sort of an up move uh, ever since. And a lot of people come to me and ask me that, they look, how much should we make out of timing the market, right? Should we be able to make a significant amount? What is a good amount? What are we looking to get out of timing the market? And this is applicable no matter what your time horizon, whether it's a 10-year horizon or even a one-day horizon or even a one-hour horizon. Like what happens when you're trying to time the market? And, you know, having been an engineer, having been, as you correctly mentioned, the Gujarati, you know, it's stock market in the blood. Over the years, I've realized that the amount of money that you can make from timing the market is not worth the bandwidth and most likely the odds are against you right uh, and let me try and let me try and explain uh, what i mean let's say you find a decent person who can time the market right let's say he gets it 40 or 50% of the time or let's say even 60% of the times the direction right right um, and you know we've been part of a group for now 2 3 weeks and you know there's a lot of emphasis on stop losses, risk management, et cetera, right? And that's absolutely fantastic. So let's assume that there is a trader who's trying to time the market or even an investor for that time, more than matter, right? And 60% of the times, 
let's say he gets the direction right now as you'd be aware you know when you're trying to time the market over let's say for a for a relatively big event you're not going to play for that half a percent or 2% so let's say you are at least going to play let's look if i want to time it i want a return of maybe 10% and let's say a stop loss let's call it of 5 to 10% right so your risk reward ratio is sort of managed now let's assume that 60% of the times you're getting the direction right right and you're making 10% let's say that is effectively 6% profit at a expected probability ratio however 40% of the times you're getting it wrong right and let's say that is another you lose another somewhere between 5 to 10% let's call it 7 and a half percent effectively that will detract it if you just do 40% into negative 7.5% you'll get negative 3% so net net out of 100 attempts let's assume or 100% of the times that you are attempting your net profit if you get your timing and direction right in this particular ratio is 3% right now this 3% effectively we've seen for a 10% move given the history of the market and to get timing right it occurs once in 3 years right unless you know you're it's an extremely volatile market and you're completely clued in once in 3 years effectively reduces this 3% to 1% extra per year now the amount of time uh, and i don't need to tell uh, a lot of people on this group you know who've been traders investors that 1% is literally it can move in a minute or 5 minutes or 10 minutes right and to be able to try and time over such a razor thin margin uh, i am not going to say it's not possible or impossible but the odds at least according to me are definitely not in your favor and second the overall outcome over a period of time is not significant the other simple option in this is again let's say if you know a lot of people um uh who come on tv etc who've got some you know some of the oil calls right got the housing prices right etc and let's say they've made 50% right in that one trade let's call it but they are probably right 20% of the times right and if you do again the same thing 20% into 50% the expected probability is 10% what people forget is that 80% of the times they are going to be losing let's say 10% right and that's negative 8% so again net net even if your quantum of what you are going to get right is significant over a period of time the expected return is not significant right and hence i think timing the market is extremely difficult and i'm not saying people should not attempt it but just be aware of your probabilities because everything is a probability and please determine your edge like when we used to trade in the market we used to know very simply that look we are very good at these seven eight stocks we are very good at one particular time frame let's call it uh, whether it's intraday whether you're looking at weekly charts whether you're looking at daily charts whether you're looking at a particular technical indicator etc right we are very clear that we have to become an expert of the seven stocks or eight stocks in a particular time frame with indicators that we understand and at the same time making sure that the stocks that we are picking are tuned towards those indicators and i'll try to give a simple example of what we what we did when we were managing the fund obviously there are let's call it 200 stocks that you can trade right inside out and the indices which are there what we realized is that and this is a bit counter intuitive but volatile stocks actually are more trend following than non volatile stocks right so if i was running let's call it a momentum uh, momentum trade right you would notice that people or stocks which have a higher beta or high volatility are actually better momentum plays even though if you see it on a chart it might look a bit volatile but those 30% of the trades that make you money 
are going to compensate for the 70% and more that don't make you money right so each of these styles or each of what we call a factor of a particular stock is actually linked to an indicator right you uh, if you just run um, and let's say let's let's make it simply down to a you know a lot of people talk about 200 dma right that look it's below 200 dma not a good sign about 200 dma you know might be good time for breakout and entering right but if you actually back test the 200 dma on an index or a stock you will see over uh, and let's call it post 2010 when a lot of changes happen it has not made you a single rupee in fact for the risk that it gives you it would have lost you money on a risk adjusted basis right but there are stocks which on a longer time frame play beautifully right and for let's say for a 200 dma are actually non volatile stocks play better but to get to that factor is you have to really back test remove those biases and then really get into the market because markets are continuously changing more than anything else right so we said that look of all the money that we are managing between me and my fund manager who was there we said that let's just divide it in a way that is what we call optimal diversification right where if we get caught on the wrong foot and let's say and obviously trades go bad right nobody has a magic wand right he or she should be doing or there should be another three four strategies that sort of optimally balance what i am doing or he or she is doing right and let me take a very simple concept uh, in investing of this uh, jay, a lot of people jay, yeah jay, just a minute jay uh, there is some housekeeping which uh, i think uh, there needs to be done you need to make me a moderator you know how to make it let me need to go and uh, just i have no idea just one minute yeah i think you have to click on your uh, this one there it will it will say whom we can make a moderator cg has something to say invite yeah. them as a speaker yeah yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. invite yeah. to speak yeah, yeah. okay to speak and maybe make me also moderator i think there is just one minute make a moderator okay yeah, yeah. okay Okay, okay, Jay. Is this is this fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry for the interruption. I think we got it. Okay. No, no, that's absolutely fine. Continue, Jay. Continue. Perfect, perfect. Um, so as I was saying, that you have to have four or five different strategies that work together, right? Uh, I mean, if you think about it uh, on an intuitive basis, the more uncorrelated strategy. these are right your risk over a shorter and a longer period of time actually gets cancelled out but your return will get averaged out right let me let me try and explain what that means and i think this was if if i had to if i had to impart one thing over the last 15 20 years i have been in the market is that the only way to make money is to find uncorrelated strategies to what you are currently doing and not that one such in tendulkar you know who will, who you can rely on or a virat kohli you can rely on almost always right because this is real money it's your hard earned money more than anything else um it's a very real risk that you are running and the only free lunch according to me is actually diversification but again even on diversification uh, people miss out on what diversification could be right uh, let's say very simply uh, let's say someone has 100 units of wealth right uh, and they're doing equity and some debt in whatever ratio they are comfortable in whatever that risk profile is etc now diversification that is the first form of diversification where you are saying that look we are doing completely different asset classes one is debt or fixed in fixed income and the other is equity right that is a basic thing that most of us indians have been taught uh, do implement 
whether you go to a zero da or an advisor or whoever it is right ki sir aap uh, we have one of the funniest things i've heard and i don't agree with it is that how do you determine your how much equity you should have at a investor level and people say you know do 100 minus your age and that is the equity uh, you should be doing right i find that quite funny because the amount of risk that you can take is not actually in my mind age dependent is dependent on how well you are doing in your life right uh, we have clients who are um 80 years old very active in the market and very happy taking 80 90% of equity risk right uh, and that effectively you know there are a lot of these clichés going around uh, you know do this do that or you know what we call heuristics that you really need to think about how you are putting in your money yes Hello Yeah sorry i think uh, i heard a hello in between um so you really need to think about what you're doing and again diversification as i was saying is if you can i identify a particular style so let's let's assume vijay you are very good at trading let's assume i am very good at investing let's assume cg is very good at um, you know somewhere intraday let's call it right uh, our options or you know different geographies etc the three let's assume of three of us could present a package to a particular client there's a lot more value in the complete package than us individually and i've seen this i've seen this mistake with a lot of people that they tend to forget that strategies will fail strategies will go wrong there will be mistakes whether operationally whether strategy wise stop loss etc and it's extremely important to have at least three four things running at the same time so that you don't go bust completely and you know given uh, where we are you know which strategies will fail strategies will go wrong there will be mistakes with the operationally with the strategy wise stop loss etc and it's extremely important to have at least three four things running at the same time so that you don't go bust completely and you know given uh, where we are you know which is you've been in the market for a long period of time you've obviously seen the evolution etc today is very simple to monitor saying that look this stop loss is triggered push this order automatically right whether it's through again any of these platforms which are readily available uh, you can code your own strategy whether it's in options futures trading arbitrage and relatively cheap more than anything else right you know so many of people use the ami broker and zero da and interactive brokers etc they just code it and it doesn't require to be a genius or you know like a mark zuckerberg at coding to optimize these strategies but then you actually know that you can put your focus somewhere else as well so almost 80% of our strategies that we used to run at the fund right while there is obviously always a mix of quantitative and qualitative decision making that goes in a lot of the execution was automated right think that we want to buy this buy this price do it in a vwap basis or a twap basis etc over the day over the last half an hour if you want the closing etc and it would get executed right all these things add and give you that bandwidth to keep improving your strategy more than anything else and i can tell you this no matter uh, you know a, a lot of traders especially in the last two years uh, have done very well right and full marks to them the only thing i tell them is that look guys this two year period has been an extremely hot run for a lot of people right you've not seen risk you've not seen downside you've not seen volatility right 
and please make sure that you are prepared for that don't uh, be under the false assumption that this will continue for the next 10 years i can write it down hands down it cannot right because uh, as a simple strategy right uh, so many people have made money uh, selling option right in the last two years managing the delta and gamma or even just you know selling puts ki jay markets are going up let me just sell puts nothing seems to be going wrong right but there i over the last last i would say in the first uh, five years of my career when i was at edu wise uh, we had this month i don't remember which month it was um uh, this was sometime in 2005 there was some news we were trading sbi call and put option uh at that point there was no complication you know there were american and european options etc uh you know not a lot of complication that you see now fairly straight forward etc in terms of settlement and i remember sbi uh, on one of those days was up on opening by 12 to 15% and that completely wiped out as almost 6 months of profits that we had from selling options right uh and we were also learning and <laughs> thankfully i was learning at someone else's expense uh in terms of a company right but it came completely came you know on a lazy tuesday out of nowhere right and these are these you know six sigma events which in the last two years a lot of people have not seen and the only thing i can say is that please be aware of this it's not easy to make 2% per year or 2% per month or even 1.5% per month in fact uh, i can tell you this from experience the fund that we ran our entire objective was to make an 8% return on a post fee post tax basis now you know someone would wonder jay look 8% kya hoga but it was such a hot product that any corporate that we went to they would say they look my fd is giving me 5% post tax you give me 8% with liquidity that's 3% more right they were not interested in the trading part of things they were saying that look relatively can i do better more than then what my money is and the strategy that we had to formulate to get to that 8% was again uh, at one point in time at peak we were running close to 20 to different ideas right uh, just to quickly break it down you know always have your fixed income strategy that look no matter what happens i'll make half a percent in a month irrespective right whether you're doing bonds whether you're doing arbitrage whether you're doing uh, some corporate actions which are there uh, let's say recently there was a tcs buyback that happened as an example right then you have what you would call the masala or where you know you would say that look let's go a bit higher up or let's call it the medium risk strategy they're not completely low risk but how much can i target in these things right and that is where i think everyone whether you're an index trader a stock trader or an investor you have to really determine what your edge is if you can't determine what your edge is i can guarantee again and i will write it down that if you don't understand why you are making money over someone else in a zero sum game you will lose out eventually and you will lose out when uh, let's say the first five trades go in your favor and you know you have put in 100 rupees right let's say uh, or 100 units rather and let's say the 100 units have become 120 you will feel like you are the top of the world doing very well and you say that look let me borrow some money from my parents this seems to be easy i found um, uh the let's say the holy grail of investing and you'll put in 500 within 5 days i can tell you that 500 you will have lost at 20 rupees and will be down to 300 right so it's very extremely important to determine why you will make money is it vijay giving great tips or is it me having found out and back tested something a lot of people uh tend to think that you know three four great trades or the last two years will continue forever and it's rarely the case so please and i can't stress this enough and i have made tremendous mistakes in my life right um within the first two years of joining edu wise uh i decided to dabble in commodity i thought you know wow you know they're giving me 20x leverage what more do i want gold seems to be going up and i literally lost 6 months of my salary right uh, wasn't fun at all 
and thankfully it was it came early in my career learned enough from it to probably not repeat that mistake but new mistakes will happen new learnings will happen and as someone forces you have to keep relearning and learning and relearning and learning right because the markets are changing um outside of this the third part that we realize is that you have to have some high risk strategies or what you know i would call the greed bucket right saying that look i don't really understand too much of option selling as an example but i need to learn it eventually it looks like it's lucrative and can it give me a bump up over what i'm doing right uh, and if you combine three of these strategies which is low risk medium risk and let's call it the greedy bucket you will realize that your sleep completely improves right you're not worried about the market thing that chalo if 10% gap up happens i'll lose some money in my greedy bucket and i've given the right allocation to it more than anything else but i know my medium bucket or medium risk bucket low risk bucket will be able to buffer that loss more than anything else right a lot of the times we find uh, traders going and investors going for you know what we call chakri stocks in investing that guy look let me put in some money or let's call it bitcoin for the, for the, for that matter right where different asset class now there's nothing wrong in investing in bitcoin or crypto or anything else the problem is or for that matter there is no wrong strategy for everyone right uh, the idea is to get the allocation right so that you don't lose your pants of sleep in a very short period of time if you've got your allocation right depending on your risk taking capacity that is the ultimate uh, barrier that you have to cross a very simple example and uh, i've been guilty of it in the past right uh, there have been times when uh, rakesh junjunwala is an example right uh, there will be news flash he buys 100 crores worth of yes bank or 100 crores worth of dhfl now anyone who knows rakesh junjunwala or knows his well these are all rounding of numbers in his wealth right but at the back of it we know that this is more optics than anything else however when we see rakesh junja buying yes bank or dhfl as an example bas isme kuch to hoga there has to be something if rakesh junja wala is buying rakesh junja doesn't care of those 100 crores there's who knows what is happening at the back end right but we will put in 10% of our wealth and what do we get in return we get volatility we get sleepless nights we get lower returns than what we expected because we are expecting it to triple in 6 months and maybe it did for some people but for most we can't see a rise of more than 30 40% right everyone and i'm sure a lot of people uh, in your group also vijay uh maybe are investing in chakri stocks and let's call it crypto for the time being i have still to meet someone who has taken a ride uh, in some of these coins of more than 300 400% right we know everyone knows that crypto when uh, let's say bitcoin went from $5 to $50000 right but have you met anyone who has held it for that point of time there is a very good chance you've not or if you find someone who who's held it for that he probably lost his wallet and the keys with it and found it later right because as humans uh, we are not excel sheets at the end of the day right if we see a gain there's a good chance we want to get out of it more than anything else and that becomes extremely important to implement these small small rules have a notebook you know the, having a notebook is the simplest and the easiest thing to do but it's probably the most important what did you do right what did you do wrong is it more important to put it on twitter i made 10 lakhs or 5 lakhs or 20 lakhs or 2 lakhs or 1 lakh or lost an equal amount or is it more important to learn how the day went what the mistakes were and how can my three strategies become more better tomorrow so that i am not prone to repeat the same mistakes because the markets will keep trying to teach you a lesson and uh, i you know which i have seen you mention it uh, so many times in your group and i completely agree with it uh, is that we'll have to keep giving tuition fees to the market to learn how the market works 
because the market is continuously changing it's not you know you learn a b c d to z and that's about it the a itself is changing the b itself is changing the c itself the basics at themselves are changing but right? if you ask someone today uh, can i just buy an asian paints and sit for the next 30 years and expect it to grow at 25% maybe not anymore right those days of easy buy and hold are gone in fact so many uh, what you hear is typically what we call survivorship bias right everyone who's only holding asian paint is who you hold hear about but you don't about you don't hear about someone who held rk or silver line or any of those mars software type of stocks which have gone down to zero right uh, i am taking these three names because my father held all these stocks right and he just could not get himself to sell these stocks till they went to zero and you know he lost a lot of money in them but thankfully he learned from them picked himself again and you know became a successful investor and that is the only thing that look we will fall many times we will make mistakes the market will teach us new things but at the end of the day we have to be able to play the game right uh, let me give you one more example uh, and i think it's a very simple example uh, to understand why it's important to stay in the game let's say we have a let's say we have a dice right 1 to 6 let's call it uh, and i tell you that are you able to stake your entire net worth right on one number and i will give you odds of 1000 to 1 so the fair odds are obviously 6 is to 1 right of a fair dice let's call it but i'm saying i will give you the odds of 1000 is to 1 right but you have to the only condition is you have to put you have to sell your house your car your jewelry all your money and put it on that one number now i can tell you with people to who have a house a car jewelry etc will never take this chance even though the odds are completely uh how do i put it uh favorable right because you say that i look if i lose everything in one shot i'm screwed at the end of the day however if i keep the odds the same let's say 1000 is to 1 on any number but tell you that look i will give you a chance to put in even 1% of your net wealth more than anything else right everyone will jump at the chance the odds have remained the same the allocation has been different and because you are only putting 1% of your let's say wealth you are able to sustain in the market you say okay it didn't come true maybe seven eight times it didn't come true but any one big event that occurs and if you get that right you will recover all those losses so it's very important to stay in the game making sure that a significant event doesn't wipe you out more than anything else third uh, and i think uh, it's very difficult for uh, people to uh, incorporate these in the strategy is cost right not only the statutory costs which are there but the cost of trading the cost of investing there always be a negative so very important to figure out what there is this one metric we used to look at and monitor very closely is mtm by trade value right um and depending on which broker you are with how much your churn is is very important to understand this and your know, nikhil kamar from zero the uh, made this comment recently uh and for someone who's been trading they would have understood immediately is that just to break even you probably need to make 25 30% a year right after costs etc which are there and a lot of people think making 25 30% is easy but i can tell you for a fact that the other side of the coin which is the hni is the uhni is the institution which is let's call it in terms of quantum represents 5 10% of the people are taking away 95% of the profits right you will hear of great stories you will hear of great this thing uh, people who you know bought fancy houses or cars uh, you know on twitter and multiple other places but i can tell you 95% of the people who are trying their hand at trading 
without having thought through what their edge is, without having a plan uh, for risk return or adjusted return, will fail eventually. And the people, unfortunately, are going to make money because they understand risk, because they have a plan, because they have 20 strategies running at any given point in time, other institutions. So the simplest thing to do is think how will an institution work. Start off small, but think what are the five strategies that I need to make sure that I don't lose my pie more than anything else. Right? And then you will see that as long as you are able to do it something systematically in a process, your risk adjusted return will be through the roof. And that's the only thing which matters is discipline, discipline, discipline. Right? If you don't have that discipline uh, and your emotions run high, uh, if uh, your EMI is dependent on trading, I can tell you that's never a good idea. If your household expenses and budget are dependent on trading, at least initially, without you having a plan, never a good idea. Right? And my idea is obviously not to discourage uh, anyone who's listening, uh, but just that you need to be aware and learn from your mistakes, right? And no matter what I can tell you or anybody else who can tell you who's been in the market for so much time, you have to unfortunately make those mistakes yourself. As long as you can write it down, understand where it is going, how it is going, what you can change or what you have changed, I guarantee it, you'll be a successful trader or an investor, right? Um, just one last point uh, before I hand it again uh, to Vijay. Uh, the simplest thing again, and markets are really a place where the more simple your strategy is, there's a very good chance you can be more consistent, right? The more moving wheels uh, in the market, the more easy it is for one thing to just break off and for the entire thing to go wrong. Right, so keep your strategies as simple as possible. Keep it in a manner that you can monitor it extremely easily and understand what went right, what went wrong. And obviously try and understand why a stock gets affected rather than just listening to someone on CNBC. With that, Vijay, I think... Uh, I'm probably uh, done. Happy to take, you know, questions from yourself, CG, or anyone um, who might be listening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Jay. Uh, I think you gave a very comprehensive uh, outlook, and uh, you've mm -hmm. been there, done that, managed 2,000 crores um, successfully, been there 15 plus years, uh, got several awards. Um, so obviously. Uh, people listening uh, must have understood, uh, got some uh, real insights of uh, uh, different kind. When I say different kind, what I mean is that, you know, mm, people generally have this idea of making 40% per year in the stock market. But Sorry, Vijay, uh, can I just interrupt you? Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I'm getting these notifications when so it has something to say, invite them as a speaker. Should I be dismissing them? Or invite dismiss. to speak. No, no, you dismiss. Okay. I think uh, CG okay. and me will take care. We will take care of it. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you you just don't do anything. Uh, so, okay. so therefore, uh, you see this um, thing about uh, people wanting to make 30, 40 percent uh, per year. And uh, if you look at if you are on Twitter, for instance, you will see screenshots of people talking of making thousand percent per day. Uh, because sure. uh, uh, yeah, so we've seen all that, right? So so when Absolutely. you say eight percent, when you say eight percent after tax, uh, it looks ridiculously uh -huh. low. Uh, when you say eight percent after tax, it looks sure. ridiculously sure. low. Uh, but Absolutely. You see, that is reality. Now you know uh, to get eight percent is. Uh, in fact, I was talking to uh, one Mr. Chetan Parikh, uh, who's uh, who taught us at Bajaj, uh, and he runs a uh, PMS about uh, fifteen hundred crores. So he told sure. me, uh, uh, you see, he, uh, we pay our uh, um, uh, marketing guys anything above uh, 7% uh, is the hurdle rate. Anything above that, yeah. we will. Uh, so, so, which means he, they are looking at 7%. They are not looking at 20% or 30%. They think even 7% is 
डिफिकल्ट टू अचीव एंड ही मैनेजेस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड क्रोर्स इज फीचर्ड इन द टॉप नाइनटी नाइन सारे के जीते राइट या जीते जीते एंड ही फीचर्स ही गिफ्टेड मी अ बुक विच टॉक्ट ऑफ नाइनटी नाइन ग्रेट इन्वेस्टर्स इन द वर्ल्ड एंड दे ओनली टू फ्रॉम इंडिया वन ऑफ दम इज झुंझुन वाला एंड वन इज चेतन पारिक सो Uh, sure, when a sure. person of that stature talks of that, and when you are talking, you have seen. I mean, you have managed uh, so much of money, so much uh, zeros right. are there in two thousand crores. Anyway, uh, uh, so there must, there is not only a grain of truth; it is a sack load of truth. I would say, uh, because I have got this request from people saying, "Sir, uh, show me a strategy which will make about eight to ten percent per month." Uh, per <laughs> month. <laughs> so, so you see, uh, so where um, you you know I, we become uh, old school or boring when we say, boss, uh, to protect capital itself is a difficult thing in stock market. Mm, and we have survived. Yeah. I tell yeah. people we have served survival itself. If the if you survive fifteen, twenty, thirty years, uh, is a big right. thing in the market. Mm, uh, making money will come. You know, it will come in uh, you know uh, cycles. So so that I think is the uh, principal message which should go to people who have listened to you. That's my. Uh, so um, Vijay, I just add one more point out here. Yeah. Uh, and you know you mentioned eight percent and FDs and someone looking for thirty, forty percent, right? Yeah. uh i think what it comes down to is the volatility of that strategy right uh i don't think 8% or 40% is the stand alone number to look at there are definitely strategies there are definitely traders out there uh who are capable of making 40% a year right i've met a good number of them but what they say is that they look there will be a month when we might be 20% down right there might be a month when we have made 30% there might be a month when we don't do anything right and hence i think the focus always should be even if you're making 8% as an example right but if you are able to leverage your money and there is an absolute let's say there's a 99% chance you'll make 8% right with very little volatility what a lot of people used to do is leverage their money in some manner so that a 8% gives you effectively a 12% return with leverage right because as long as you think and believe that your strategy is low vol it's easy to leverage the opposite actually happens with a lot of us traders who are starting off we leverage on high wall strategies and when the shock comes of losing money unfortunately is when emotions increase emotions increase we are not able to stick to the process more than anything else so while a strategy is capable of making 40% there is or there has to be enough risk in that strategy for you to go through and there's a good chance you'll get a couple of heartaches along the way as long as you are able to take those heartaches a 40% strategy is a great strategy but for someone who is not able to take heartaches let's say like a corporate as an example they are not in the business of investing or they don't want to be rather let's call it that so for them is saying that look i have 20 crores lying in the bank at 5% you are giving me 8% with a high degree of probability i am coming to you right and his risk adjusted return is what he is looking at he saying that 8% is coming with a 99% probability if someone comes to sell a significant option strategy at scale that is probably coming with a 40% probability on on a year to year basis or a month to month basis and that is something he doesn't want so the probability of getting to that end point whether it's a month whether it's a week or whether it's a year is actually what determines on which strategy you should do and at the end a lot of people tell me that they look an arbitrage fund i keep a lot of my cash money in an arbitrage fund right for let's call it dry powder let's call it i'm waiting for an opportunity in some stock whatever it is right and i think they what are you doing in for 4% per annum why are you keeping it in an arbitrage fund i says very simple this is money that i need at a future stage which i don't want to risk in any manner and i need to be able to be completely liquid with it he saying jay why don't you start selling options i have heard people make 2 3% i think the 2 3% is there but 
the day it kicks you where it should not you are going to be running helter skelter you will not know what to do and hence that 4% for me is more important than even 1% a month so when people tell me just to summarize it that jay is 4% good how much do i target etc i think it's unfortunately dependent on how much risk you can take how much leverage you can take and what is the duration of your strategy more than anything else yeah yeah, yeah thanks jay i think uh, you uh, explained it well uh, it is just that you know uh, the risk we are not looking at most of us uh, look at only the reward part of it so there is always a challenge uh, uh, when somebody says uh, he looking for a single uh, sorry a low double digit returns people say why do you i mean uh, i mean why should one come to the market at all uh, but anyway uh, 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 only time will tell and uh, experience will tell and mistakes will tell as to yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, right uh, so anyway so now uh, i'll just uh, throw it open to the uh, forum uh, i will probably okay. come back a little later in terms of asking any questions uh, cg uh, cg is our uh, evergreen moderator uh, cg uh, would you like to take over and uh, uh, moderate uh, uh, the questions from other people cg uh, right sir thanks a lot sir thanks jay uh, actually uh, the topic is uh, very uh, foreign to me so the so it will be difficult for me today but i'll try to be in between and pull up people and let them ask so cg i will help you out no problem uh, no yeah, problem. Yeah, if you're yeah, feeling yeah. a little bit difficult then i will i will take over the moderation also no no issue on that no, no, no issue ah. uh, so i'll straight away come to uh, shankar so that he can uh, say what he wants शंकर आ रही हेलो हाँ राजमा यस प्लीज या सो आई हैव या थैंक्स फॉर द अपॉर्चुनिटी जय सर आई जस्ट हैव लाइक वन क्वेश्चन यूजली व्हाट आई डू इज आई फॉलो द मनी आई ट्राई टू डू दैट एज अ रिटेल एंड i know the markets are usually moved by big players like insurance companies which are investing uh, and then making money and uh, so i see that you know where they are putting money so and back in 2020 i saw that most of the insurance companies hdfc icic prudential they booked out their uh, money out from the market between february 18th or 20 of 2020 till march 6 and afterwards we saw a huge fall and then okay at that point i was like okay you know they these guys knew that something big is coming they were in line with the foreign markets and they uh, they book out those particular profits or you know uh, kept on the sidelines and then it was like a kind of relief to me because if there is a correct uh, you know upward pull back i knew that they will not sell again because you know they are already out so they might be buying or at least keeping on the sideline so there will not be any sell pressure do you also okay. follow uh, money before you know putting the other people's money in your fund or how do you do that like you know do you also or or are you the big uh, money and then you would have your own secret formula so how do you do that sure 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 so uh, i think it's a very important question uh, and it's a very simple answer if you ask me a lot of the data uh, that dis put in fis put in that goes in and out of the market is very easily available when you go to a money control you generally get the monthly data a lot of the times this daily data is available from different sources like bloomberg etc right uh, and you should probably do this exercise as well if you back test it saying that look when the big players sell or the big players buy how does the next month or three years or six months look and what uh, i done this maybe 5 6 years back and i'm pretty sure the answer is still the same uh, what you'll realize is that flows affect few stocks to a degree because a lot of these things uh, are not i would say news driven right but there is definitely inside information that people misuse have been misusing and will misuse 
right but just tracking money flow per se as one indicator is never going to give you an answer to buy or sell it has never given me an answer it's always as i said uh, if you can get really good at five six stocks to trade right and i'll come to the investing part of this as well from my perspective if you can get really good at five six stocks to trade you will become an expert and these flows will be just one more input to the 20 inputs that you are saying whether it's charts whether you know talking to your favorite broker whether talking to someone on the group whether your indicators etc you will realize that you become a much better trader because when this news comes you will be the first one to react and react in a manner which will make you money see action is one thing is very simple to say oh look they've come up with a 30% uh, you know growth in revenue as an example or net income let's call it but if there's an exceptional item uh, which is let's say sale of land and you know that they were going to do this or there was a very good chance because you just in the balance sheet you will actually be shorting the stock whereas everyone else will be trying to go long so it's very important to just have the flows as one portion of your input to buy or sell whether the it's an index or a stock thank you, thank you jay sir we have bread with us bread please yeah uh i think i had the similar question what uh, the earlier uh, gentleman asked so i was looking at it as to what are the mutual funds investments which are happening cyclically and how do they rebalance in terms of equity or hybrid whatever model is there is there a chance that we really see some kind of value in these and uh, are these suggested i mean since uh, uh, i think uh, jay has been talking more about traders i i am a long term investor so do you really think that these are the stocks one should actually trace back and study and really work on them or is it just a cyclical thing for mutual funds to rebalance so uh, you know one of the more uh, popular strategies uh, that a lot of people follow is when uh, these global uh, msci indices uh, balance out right you know there was a there's a lot of articles on whether hdfc will be there not be there post merger of hdfc in hdfc bank etc and for multiple reasons uh if you see and one of the ways to track it is let's say if you know uh, hdfc as an example on an average trades 100 crores a day it's a random number right i don't have the exact number but let's say it trades 100 crores a day and you know that there's going to be 500 crores of buying because a lot of these funds were tracking msci need to adjust it to those weightages as an example right it has never been uh, i have tried it practically and theoretically because it seems very interesting that look everybody knows this is going to happen right either it will get adjusted on opening so where you are not able to benefit from that on that particular day second a lot of the rebalancing happens through a lot of bulk trades which happen inter party on the exchange so you never see a a mutual fund when they are churning whatever the stocks they are there is never someone like a dealer who's sitting and punching in because their quantities are huge more than anything else right uh, you never see them because they know that okay look you go to bsc these are the big shareholders uh let me call them up first and ask them if they want to buy or sell at a fair price in the market more than anything else so a lot of the trades happen uh in bulk order uh there is very little gain to be had and i think our markets are extremely efficient in that manner uh that whenever there is a significant rebalancing either internationally or domestically uh in our indices or in a mutual fund which is doing multiple things the effect is not significant however in an instance when liquidity is poor redemptions are high you will see that this is an extremely adverse effect and without taking the pms uh, fund manager's name uh, 
uh, he's a very popular person on uh, on CNBC. Comes on his farm, looks around, you know, gives very well spoken, etc. His fund was down seventy percent at one point uh, during uh, the pandemic. Now this was not because his stock picks were bad, right? It was simply because his strategy looked at illiquid stocks. and when the redemption pressure came it became significant because he had to sell and there was not enough liquidity in the market however for rebalancing by these global indices um i think they've all figured it out right they only go to what we call uh, prime brokers because in india uh, going to a broker who is going to maybe you know front run your stock is obviously not not great because all this is is known per se so at least from my experience i have seen that rebalancing across any institution is a very well um process size thing to do everyone is ready for it with very little impact on price the only impact on price as i said is when there is no liquidity or let's say if you have a You know, one of the largest small cap funds is an example, and it's close to twenty five, thirty thousand crores. Now, if they decided to buy uh, stock, let's call it stock A, right? Uh, small caps don't have a lot of liquidity, so you will see that price go up thirty, forty percent in maybe a couple of weeks because they are continuously buying whoever is coming, right? And they are playing for a five x game five years later, so they don't care too much about thirty, forty percent. so when that something like that happens when there's significant buying pressure in an illiquid stock or selling pressure is when that price moves unfortunately uh, i don't think it is easy to capture or trade for a gain consistently in these stocks or a strategy like rebalancing okay thanks jay uh, next is bhava Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. As an individual uh, uh, investor, I just wanted to ask: uh, uh, for a beginner, how much uh, percentage gain is good enough? And then, if you buy a really good stock, which is fundamentally good, and uh, you you keep the stock, and then uh, sometimes it goes to twelve percent, ten percent, and then uh, you feel you have to be the long term investor, and then it goes again yeah. to six percent, three percent. <laughs> and then you'll be like uh, disappointed. Uh, you don't know when to sell, what to do. Uh, so right. uh, just uh, right. yeah, just, say, uh, just give me an eye opening on that. Thank sure, you. absolutely. So, Bhava, the answer is is very simple in this. If you are saying it's a fundamentally good stock, you've done your research, you understand the company, you've talked to the management, talked to the dealers, talked to the creditors, talked to the debtors. Poured over the balance sheet, looked at multiple research, lo- looked for views that are counter to yourself on your particular view on that stock. If after all those things, you are really convinced, the best way to make money in the equity markets is what we call concentration. Right? You don't make money by investing in hundred stocks in the market. You make money by investing in ten stocks, which you are. as i said a high probability of making money right uh, you are talked about you know jay is it good enough to target 12% or 18% or 6% or 5% over benchmark or alpha or maybe over an fd and the answer is very simple let's say you know today you could go to uh, let's say a real estate developer right who will say whether in any city let's pick coimbatore as an example right and they will be ready to give you money at maybe 25% but you are never sure uh, after the first two maybe interest rate payments whether your principal will come back at the end of the year right and as long as again you can give it to a hundred different real estate developers you will be fine but if you are not sure of that one person you are giving it to and let's say you are concentrating it and you don't understand the risk then any return from there you will not know when to either double up or exit or stay put you know one of the biggest things um, 
and logically right and i don't think any anyone might dispute this is when you are buying a stock at a lower price than what you earlier bought and what people call averaging there's a higher probability of it doing well over a period of time however that probably probability is dependent on your research how well do you know the company right and if i have to take statistics from my own business right uh, i would say less than 20% of my clients would have bought in march 2020 or even april or may or june right in hindsight or that was the best opportunity to buy right we would have made a 70 80% return on any stock on any you know you threw a dart at uh, you know the paper and the stock that it hit uh, you would want that uh, and you would have made 70 80% the idea is not to target 12% or 18% or 3% is but it is to compound your wealth over a period of time in great companies and if you can find those great companies whether they seem expensive or cheap right now over a long period of time they will make you enough money to grow your wealth and i don't know whether it's going to be 12% or 18% the lo- that's the emotional answer to things the logical answer is uh, over a period of time uh, typically your index or let's call it nifty for a time being has given a risk premium of anywhere from 4 to 8% over your repo rate over five year cycles let's call it right now if they've given this uh, and the index is at a 4 to 8% you have to assume that if you're taking more risk in terms of volatility in terms of liquidity you will want to make more than 15 18% and that should be your target then if you are going into let's say mid caps and small caps that look for the premium that i'm paying in terms of volatility and um, liquidity i want to target 18 20% but as i mentioned above that uh, unfortunately equity investing looks great in excel and back testing it's not a linear line and there have been periods where i'll give um, now without taking a stock name uh, missed out on the rally that we saw let's say post september 2020 literally did zero right uh, was at 350 remained at 350 today it's close to 800 and made up that in two days or in two months sorry right but the point is i kept on accumulating because i was very confident that the company is doing well not as i don't know what the market saw why i did not see it but i was very confident and maybe it's done better than the market maybe it's not but i know that this company for the risk i'm taking had at least has to make me 20 25% can i expect the same return from an asian pains or an hdfc maybe not a fair expectation should be 10 12% from an hdfc or an asian pains whereas if you think you found the next micro cap stock which is going to become big like an aisha motors or pantel loans you know so many of these stories are there you have to target those higher returns but just be aware of the risk that you are taking that this can go to zero at any point in time so always have and you know vijay has said it multiple times always have what is your stop loss and why is it there is it a random 10% is it 15% where does this 15% come from is it a function of volatility is it a function of that look worst case peers are at you know 20p this is at 25p worst case it will fall by 20% if it continues on this path as an example so please have there's no unfortunately i don't think i have given you an answer that should you target 12 to 18% as a beginner or someone who's just starting off i would again say just do the simple things which makes sense to you yeah, yeah thank you so thank like you. quality quality stocks growth stock and consistency is all matters okay thank you yeah. thank you see, see, see i'm sorry i'm just going to add one more point out there you know mention quality growth uh, etc these are just different factors which are there that make up a stock right you can find quality growth in a large cap also and you can find quality growth in a small cap as well 
but your return expectation might be completely different out of those. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank just you a question you. from my side. Sure. If you, yeah. Uh, what are the uh, sectors where FIFI uh, foreign direct investors are investing uh, uh, largely or putting their money on, in those sectors? And which are the sectors they are avoiding in India? Sure. The simple answer is I have no idea. Right? Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, this also, this question is slightly uh, double edged in terms of making money for me. Right now, let's say uh, one of the biggest FIs which is there, they are only trying to let's call it Vanguard for the time being. Right, they are only trying to replicate an ETF which they've created of which India might be a part. So, you might see a lot of FI money coming into the stocks which have the highest weightage, let's call it HDFC Bank, Reliance, TCS, etc. That doesn't mean that they are bullish on a TCS or an HDFC bank. Right? Uh, I don't follow, personally, I don't follow what the FIs or the DIs are doing. Uh, I said, if you, you know, some other gentleman had asked the question on, you know, do you ca track cash flows, where they're going, how they're going? Uh, I think over a long period of time, they don't make a difference because they have very different objectives. They are very different targets. And at the end of the day, the strategies that they are following are very different from what you should be doing. I've And so one last point on this. Uh, I've learned it the hard way multiple times. When you just follow someone blindly, even whether it's Rakesh Junjunwala or Warren Buffet, it's easy to replicate their portfolios you will not be able to replicate their success. Okay. Uh, Kamal? Would you uh, like hello? to ask something? Yes. yes. Uh, I had actually a generic question uh, uh, related to, you know, how you want to uh, carry forward your trading or investment career, basically. See, I see sure. two types, types of people. One is Rakesh Junjunwala. He invests only his own money, right? And there are people who manage funds and they manage billions of dollars in funds, but it's other people's money, right? Uh, both are good investors. Rakesh is also a very good investor. The other person is also a good investor. So if you are a good investor, you know, you know, you mm -hmm. can do trading, you can find investments. What should be your way? Should you go Rakesh Junjunwala's way or should you go and you know try to manage other people's money also? What will be your view on that? Sure. So, uh, even if you talk about Rakesh Junjunwala or Warren Buffet or some of the other people on the group who are managing their own money and clients' money, at the end of the day, it has to meet your objectives, right? Now, Rakesh Junjunwala, let's call him an ace investor. Uh, he's doubling his money, which at whatever CAGR, he's doubling his money. You have to look right now, I have 100 units of wealth. Right? Whatever that equivalent number for you is. I want to get to 10 crores. Right? Now that 10 crore number has to grow at a, to get to that 10 crore number, you have to grow at a particular CAGR. Let's say you come up with a number 25%. Right? Which effectively means you're doubling your money every hour, approximately every three years. Now either you say that you're capable enough of doing that. Right? And any given point of time, managing your own money is the best way to do it. But that doesn't mean that if you can carry some clients along the way who trust you, who understand your philosophy, who understand how much risk you are taking, who understand your views on capital protection, who understand that, look, he's great in understanding the Indian IT space. And he's only concentrating on that as an example. I'm trying to find the five best stocks out there in the IT space. Right? There's absolutely no harm in taking client money. But to, to take that client money, and I can tell you this from my experience, is one of the most difficult thing to do in terms of expectations, that burden of managing someone else's money, doing right on it, and making money. Because with your own money, we are generally more loose with it 
than outside money so you might be willing to risk 25% or 30% on a stock because you understand it but your clients might not be so unless which is why a lot of pms fund managers or even mutual fund managers if you follow them and interact with them all they're trying to explain to you is what their strategy is nobody is saying we are going to make you 25% or 20% or 15% they are saying this is how we pick stocks this is what we think is the risk that generally comes across this is how we manage the risk this is how we protect your capital if at all this is how we do a b and c and if that sort of resonates with you that is the person you should be giving money to okay fine thank you uh, so basically you are saying it is preferable if you are doing your own uh, slightly maybe it's slightly better no no it's definitely preferred because once you do your own thing let's say you either do it through a pms or even get your uh, let's say dmat account audited as an example right uh, saying that look this is what i've done in the last 5 years that's also very powerful because then people know that look this person has done abc he is able to deliver returns which are have these characteristics in risk adjusted or beating the market or alpha or beta or sharp etc whatever you want and hence i'm easily able to decipher what you are doing not in terms of the stock that you are buying or trading style but what the characteristic is of your profile and does it resonate with me and then people will only reach out to you saying that look please take my money okay fine thank you so much and just one last question let's say uh, someone is managing uh, 1 billion dollars okay just uh, benchmark number okay Sure. So he is managing others people. Let's say he has others one billion dollars with him, and he is investing that money. So just as you know, just as an estimate or um, general idea, how does such people make money for themselves? Like, uh, do they take a, a share of the profit, or it's like I give you ten percent and whatever above it, it goes to me? Or how do they cut out their sure. share of money? from the returns that they are generating very simple this is a very simple answer uh, there are generally three ways you can take fees right whether it's a mutual fund mutual fund generally have what we call a fixed fee not generally always have as of now a fixed fee or what if you just look up something called tr or total expense ratio right this is what the mutual fund charges as a percentage of the aum or assets under management that they are managing this is a fixed fee whether they make money or lose money that's fixed then you have a pure performance fee driven which a lot of pmss and a few aifs do saying that look as long as we can make money over a hurdle let's call it 10% or 8% over that amount we'll take 25% as fees and the logic behind that is that look i at least want to give you more than fd returns before i start earning Okay. right and the third is a hybrid structure where they say that look i don't want to charge you a, a very high fixed fee i will take a small a smaller fixed fee and if i do well i'll take a performance fee out of that okay that's correct that's basically a hybrid of the first two okay absolutely absolutely so broadly all whether you call it a hedge fund whether you call it an eif whether you call it a pms a lot of these has to fall into one of these three categories almost all of them will fall into one of these three categories oh okay kamal i think you got your answer sheetal ji yes sheetal ji are there mukesh ji i think you finished your question or you want to ask another question mukesh ji uh, vijay ji main abhi thoda sa bahar mein hu okay sir okay sir. no problem i will okay. ask you Ma- later yeah manoj ji Manoj sir. Yes sir, yes sir. Thanks for, thanks for asking. Uh, so my question is, uh, if suppose if any investor, investor since last uh, say 15 to 20 year back in some stock since IPO, and uh, still those stock 
to be held by that investor. So are they also required to do some hedging on that or just to keep on holding them? Sure. So again, um, the, if you just go back and ask, why are you still holding that stock? Right. I'm a very, uh, how would you call, I would call myself a purist, right? That it's very important for you to determine why you're holding something. And if you can't determine why you're holding something, then you should not hold it. It's very black and white for me. So if you've held a stock since IPO for 15, 20 years has done well for you every year or after at least every six months, I would urge each and everyone, including me, to review your portfolio and see that out of the X number of stocks that you're holding, whether it was an IPO or bought six months back or six years back or 16 years back, why are you still holding that stock? And if you don't and are unable to determine why you're holding that stock, from a fundamental point of view, you should not hold it. And why I say you should not hold it is when a significant event occurs in that company. When let's say the sales go down or sales double up or new management or some corporate action, you will be unable to take action on it to benefit for your portfolio. So at any given point in time, it's very important for us and keep reminding us to review the portfolio and why to hold it. As an example, while I might have knowledge, I'm still learning, etc. In my personal portfolio, I just have seven stocks. And I'm still unable to completely follow the seven stocks to the level that I would like it to. In fact, I keep telling myself, Jay, you need to remove two stocks. Because I'm not able to follow them to the degree that I want. Yeah, I know, Jay. Uh, in fact, I've been telling people that, you know, to keep more. I have in my family portfolio only two stocks. Now, in my Perfect. portfolio, Perfect. I, yeah, I recommend only not more than five. Uh, sure. But you see, uh, uh, the mutual funds have 30, 40, 50, 60. In fact, uh, if you go by SEBI rules, uh, they can have uh, even 10 because 10% rule. Okay, uh, maybe yeah. 10, 20. Uh, Warren Buffett has got 92% of his entire portfolio in 20 stocks and 50% in one stock and 82% in 10 sure. stocks. Sure. But uh, we try to out-buffet Warren Buffett. So that's how it is, I suppose. Uh, so probably we are in the minority. Uh, Manoj, but we we'll, we'll make those mistakes or we'll keep making those mistakes till we learn. It might take some people two years. It might take some people 20 years. Yeah, that's true. And, Manoj, you could... And just going on the same line... Uh, and Vijay sir, sorry for that. Uh, just I'll take a minute for that. Uh, means going on the same line, means the person who is holding those stocks since, uh, means it's IPO, and those companies are doing good good businesses, and that their, their top line and bo bo bottom line is maintained. So what is the harm in holding those stocks? Absolutely, there's no harm. But as long as you can determine... That that top line, as you said, when you talk about top line, bottom line, and let's call it a few other items on balance sheet, as an example. Like, is there that top line and bottom line might be growing, but is there market share coming down, as an example, right? Is there employee strength growing faster than the top line, right? Is there have they expanded significantly, but those projects are not contributing as much as someone would hope. These are all questions uh, that you have to ask of your portfolio. And only if you can understand your portfolio outside of just saying, this company is growing at 20%. That's great. Right? But not necessarily it will continue to give you returns in the future. So as long as you can determine that this company is good for your portfolio because of A to Z attributes, whether they're fundamental, technical, statistical is completely up to you. You should definitely hold it. Why not for the next 50 years? But as long as those check marks 
and you are checking those check marks. Yeah, uh, thanks. Hey. Uh, thank you. I hope uh, Manoj ji okay, got your answer. You, yeah, uh, Junaid, Jay, Junaid, sir. I wanted to add something, Vijay ji, here. Uh, I am also of the similar thoughts. Uh, two to five stock portfolio for multiple returns and all. Even I personally hold around two three stocks itself. But to the larger audience, uh, I mean, most of the people, ninety five percent of the people, are not even able to understand the business of the company. So recommending them to put money in a concentrated portfolio uh, would be very detrimental to a larger audience. For people who sure. are learned enough, for people who are learned enough, who are able to understand the business, who are able to go through the nitty gritties of everything, yes, uh, having a concentrated portfolio helps a lot. But for a larger audience, uh, it helps in reducing the mistakes. because they are not able to you know uh, uh, swim through the difficult uh, world of uh, financial uh, jargons and everything so uh, sure. i sure. think diversification helps them so i completely buy your point uh, the point i was trying to make is that if you're doing it on your own right just understand that there is limited bandwidth the more you can concentrate that bandwidth to a limited number of stocks the better it is so uh, in you know uh, one of my ex bosses used to say that that jay look the deeper you can go to into the stock the better it is than going wider into 30 stocks jay, if you can identify you. that one stock no no jay mai bhi yahi bol raha hu mera khud ka portfolio Sorry. 75% of my portfolio is in one stock and 25% in another so i am also Correct. a concentrated bad guy what i am saying is uh, people who do not have the know how to go into the nitty gritty sure. who will they concentrate they cannot but uh, <laughs> but the argument out there from me you are absolutely right is that, that they should not be doing or betting on stocks based on someone else's uh, and half let's say half baked information is the point i am trying to make aap mutual fund ko de do आप पी एम एस को दे दो आप ए आई एफ को दे दो हुआ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव इट इट्स एक्चुअली इन माई माइंड एंड आई विल टू डिस अग्री आउट हियर इज दैट इवन दो एज यू सेट मोस्ट पीपल माइट नॉट अंडरस्टैंड फाइनेंशियल जागन माइट नॉट बी एबल टू गो इन टू द डेप्स ऑफ द बैलेंस शीट एक्सेट्रा यू शुड नॉट बी डूइंग इट देन इट्स लाइक सेंग यू नो आई कैन गो टू द इंटरनेट एंड लर्न आउट टू हाउ टू डू ओपन हार्ट सर्जरी वेरी सिंपल right they'll explain from a to z but when things go wrong when let's say if a high bp person comes on my table right to open up i think there are 20 other complications which are there and i should not be the one doing the surgery right in the same manner uh, because there are no entry barriers to investing doesn't make it easy to invest or make money out of 100% i completely 100% buy that but there are n number of people uh, in the market who will just get one win and they will feel that they are kings of the market and they will continue to invest the way they have got the first win and eventually they will die down and similarly well, yes there are plethora of people who do not know the financial accounting they only know the technical analysis and do, they only do technical analysis and they do only invest based on technical analysis no Perfect. no hard feelings from for them but again similarly uh, there are a lot of people who just know nothing about technical analysis they just know rsi or mscd and they just keep on trading based on them but eventually everything gets lost out because if you do not have a system in place everything uh, dies down absolutely so you know rsi has been around for the last 70 years 70 odd years right uh, and if you just you know a lot of people do a 14 day rsi follow 70 30 etc right there is the index or stock so i'm just giving a very small example uh there has to be a starting point that look i have back tested this 14 day rsi on 70 30 level on this index how can i improve it can i put in another flag to say that only once 
it starts to accelerate after let's say an MACD a crossover like can I combine RSI and MACD the point is and I think you are also alluding to that is you have to keep improving you have to keep iterating your strategy for that you need bandwidth it cannot be I have taken B-stock and you know you have a lot of clients that I talk to saying that I have 20 blue lists or blue chip stocks. I was saying, oh, why are you wasting time bandwidth in buying 20 blue chip stocks? Now, index is a lot. You'll get a similar weight. You don't have to do anything. Now, index is a lot. You're saying, no, Jay, I'm trying to make some more alpha. Say, how much more alpha have you actually made? And they have no answer to that over, let's call it three years, five years, 10 years, whatever the time period is, right? And because they have no answer, it just tells me me that there is no bandwidth if there's no bandwidth you're not able to track those 20 stocks or 10 stocks or even five stocks and hence it is actually detrimental and i think that's what you're you're saying that more people because they should diversify now diversification can be through a mutual fund through an index fund through whichever means but agree to that point definitely Yeah, I uh, think we focus should be more towards learning that people should continue to keep on learning like the way you said. It should be a process rather than focusing on a concentrated portfolio. Even if somebody has 20, 30 stocks in the portfolio, the purpose should be to get the maximum learning out of it and then concentrate based on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Completely. 100% agree. Yeah. Okay. Can we go to uh, Srinivasan, sir? Srinivasan, sir, you are there? It's been a long time since we have seen you. Srinivasan, sir? Okay. Probably is not. There. Yeah, I am outside. So, maybe in a five minutes, I may be able to ask the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Praveen, sir? Praveen? Hello. Yeah, Praveen. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, Jayaji mentioned Vanguard. So I would like to know what would be some of the low cost index funds uh, which are in India, which would be India's yeah. answer to Vanguard. Sure. Um, if you see Vanguard, right, the number of options that they offer in terms of uh, an index is a very, is a very, I think, uh, not a broad enough question that you've asked. I think what maybe you're trying to ask is that Jay, if I want a particular factor or a particular style, what can I get in India? Right? Because Vanguard offers every, every particular style that you can think of, every universe you can think of, every geography you can think of and has made it into an extremely low cost universe more than anything else. Right? Uh, in India, the AUM is very much concentrated on Nifty, which is an index fund. And you'll find many, you pick any index fund, uh, you know, we've done a small study uh, on tracking error of an index fund versus the index, right? And we found that even after cost, the tracking error is anywhere from half a percent to 1%. Uh, someone had countered this uh, saying that, look, if the size is big enough, the tracking error is smaller as well. Or there's a correlation between um, size and tracking error, right? So generally, uh, you can always go with a fund size, which is bigger, if you're just looking for index return, because they have a generally have a low cost and a low tracking error. I, I'm, I'm unable to suggest a particular fund for obvious reasons, uh, whether it's SEBI, whether it's our philosophy, etc. Uh, we don't believe in a country like India, um, unless you are 65 years old, not looking at alpha, uh, and have the time and bandwidth, indexing is not the way to go according to us because there are enough opportunities for alpha. So, and while... 
can sure. you enumerate some of the disadvantages of going with an index fund absolutely absolutely so for me the first one is you are guaranteed to make less than index return right whatever the small cost is there whether it's 20 bips 10 bips 5 bips 30 bips 40 bips whatever it is one you are guaranteed to make less than that an index fund if it's making more than the index you should be even more worried because they're not able to replicate it and this is where the tracking error comes more than anything else second uh, in a country like india which is what you'd call a developing country there are numerous options right as multiple people have mentioned in, in, including me having a concentrated portfolio is the way to make money an index fund does not look at fundamentals of a company does not look at technicals of a company does not look at statistics of a company it's simply what you would call survivorship bias ki bhai these 50 companies have survived and done well and the assumption is that they will continue to do well for the foreseeable future fourth right fourth uh looking at cost in deciding a particular fund let's whether it's an index or an active or whatever it is in my mind is a wrong thing to do right when you buy a stock you're not looking at how much brokerage you have paid you're looking at the potential of the stock now whether the stock is able to outperform uh, there are a lot of uh, reports out there by spiva etc that large cap funds mid cap funds etc are not even able to beat the average mid cap fund is not even able to beat the benchmark right and my uh, sort of rebuttal to that is that investing is bloody difficult the average fund will never be able to beat the benchmark it takes time and effort to speak to the management the cio the fund manager the investment team the sales team the communication team look at that past performance looking at the risk adjusted returns looking at multiple aspects looking at the focus of the fund looking at the aum size looking at operations and multiple other things before you decide on a particular fund however once you decide on a particular fund and we did a small study on this that if you look at are able to eliminate a lot of the funds there's a greater chance you can do better than benchmark post fees or post active management fees so for me indexing or people who want to go to index fund in a country like india are losing out on the bigger picture so jay ji you mentioned that uh, in a country like india so what mm-hmm. do you mean in a country like india so are there any special sort sure. of set of circumstances in regarding india yeah absolutely so my belief is india the amount of opportunities that will open up in the next 20 30 years are immense right the potential and let's say we just have to look three four countries away into china right what china was let's say 10 years back everyone thought it's a low cost exporter right today uh, and as difficult as it, it is to believe it is not only a low cost exporter it is a high cost exporter and extremely the consumption within the country has grown exponentially right now i don't know whether it might take 5 years or 50 years for india to get to something like that i have no idea all i know is that that opportunity is there so are there companies and not a country as a whole which might be able to capture those opportunities 110% whether is it a mutual fund that will capture it is it your personal pick that will capture it is it a pms or an aif who knows that's why it's important to do your own research and if you are unable to do your own research there are two ways to go about it one you say that you look i'm you know you mentioned that an index fund uh, given historical uh, spreads between repo rate and premiums will give me a 10 11% right which is more than let's call it a 5% fp and a 10 11% you're doubling your money every uh, let's call it 7 to 7 and a half years 
or six to seven years, somewhere between six to seven years. If you're okay with that, who am I to say or anybody to say that you should be doing active? But in a country like India, if you have the risk-taking capacity, there's opportunity to double your money every four years. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. It's not easy. As I said, it's bloody difficult. But is there opportunity there? Definitely. No, I, th I think that's very well put, uh, Jay. Uh, let's go to Junaid. Have, uh, have you asked a question? Did you want to say something, Junaid? Okay, probably is not there. Amrish, would you like to take up a question? Amrish? Okay, not there. Deepak? Vijayaji, if it's okay, I, I would like to. Okay, I think I'm ready to level. Yeah, yeah. Vijay, sir, when we talk about the index, we have to call it once again. If it's possible for out of the room. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Deepak, you want to take up a question? Yeah, one minute, one minute. Sorry, CG, you want to pull somebody before that? Yeah, Gaurav. I would like to ask you to speak. Yeah, actually, I joined uh, a bit late, so maybe I'm not uh, not aware of the context. If uh, if you can quickly recap, then I think we can discuss. Or else we can go move uh, we'll to the next. Back. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you listen, yeah, sure. Listen to maybe you'll get the context. Amrish ji, Amrish ji, you're not there. Deepak ji, Deepak. No. Money? Hi. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, money. Loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, I have been uh, investing in uh, mutual funds since 2015. And uh, like others, I also started uh, following the market uh, since last uh, two years. And uh, I like it. I, it has tempted me so many so many times like to uh, open a broker account uh, demat and then invest but uh, like uh, i i try to understand uh, how the market works and then uh, to read how to read the uh, financial statements <clears throat> i find it uh, it's really extremely uh, difficult i mean i'm working uh, full time and i spend uh, time on weekends and whenever i get a time i I try to uh, learn the learn about market, but uh, it just I mean it has so many things like uh, first you should know the probability in math and then you should understand the accounting and the industry and uh, again you have to read a lot of uh, books history uh, and again the company law so many things are there and uh, I'm not sure like if I can. Uh, learn much and then uh, start investing. Uh, in my view, I'm just thinking that it's going to take uh, maybe five years or ten years to learn more, and then maybe I can start uh, investing. Or would you just suggest that uh, just stick with a mutual fund? That should be enough. Because uh, looking at my mutual fund, it's it's giving around 17-18 uh, percent CAGR since last uh, seven years. Sure. Sure. So, uh, at any given point of time, and I forget the gentleman who asked that question, it's always good to invest on your own, right? So, my first uh, gut feeling says, even though you are finding it difficult, even though there might be some jargon, even though there might be some math, even though it might be difficult to understand, I would say start. And start with an allocation where you're very comfortable. If something goes wrong tomorrow, you're not going to leave sleep over. So let's say again, you're worth a hundred units of wealth. I would say start with 10 units of wealth. Do your own thing. See what stocks the mutual fund that you're holding has, right? Try and ask your RM or try and ask the fund manager, why have you bought this stock? What are the 10 reasons why you read the stock, right? Read research report. The research report makes it simple or decipher the balance sheet. Right, let's say you want to buy Infosys. I'm just saying as an example, right? There will be 20 research reports available on Infosys. See what they are saying and why they are saying it. You might choose to agree or disagree with them. That's absolutely fine. But it's one level above our balance sheet. 
they've already read the balance sheet and are giving you their opinion or interpretation of the balance sheet. I think Infosys will continue to grow at 15% because of X, Y, and Z reason. Or I think its margins will fall because of ABC reason. And build from there. But definitely start. No doubt in my mind, everyone, whether you have a job, you don't have a job, doing well, not doing well, should start and invest some amount of their money in stocks on your own. You never know, you might turn out to be a great investor. Right? In fact, I know so many people who are not, you know, they are pure bred um, investors who do well because they have a very different perspective to look at things. And your perspective and interpretation is the only thing that matters between you making money or not making money. If you see things which other people are not, in fact, one of the PMSs that we recommend, right? Uh, he's given an alpha almost as much as the index return. Over three years, the index has given, I think, a 16% return. He's given close to a 30% CAGR return. Right? Because his perspective and the way he looks at it is very different. So I would say very simply, keep a lot of your money or your wealth in mutual fund, wherever you're comfortable. But definitely allocate some money for yourself to start investing. Yeah, Thank money, you. I think you got your answer. I think uh, now he's inspired you enough for you to start investing. <laughs> ah, yeah. Good, good, good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Ajay, Ajay, would you like to ask a question? On Actually, comments, please? Yeah, Gaurav. Okay, Gaurav. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, basically, what uh, maybe JG, <clears throat> we actually see this alpha uh, because what I have seen is that uh, the PMSs, uh, firstly, they, <clears throat> they disclose their returns uh, mm -hmm. before taxes, right? So, if you, let's say, sure. consider the taxes on on dividends and uh, the taxes on the capital gains which are incurred mm -hmm. in the portfolio uh, the yeah. returns will come down that's the first point so in us by regulation you have to disclose both absolute returns as well as returns after distribution on on taxes that's the first point second point okay. is if we look at benchmarks, so let's say PMS holding 50% large cap and uh, maybe a 50% small cap or mid cap allocation. And uh, would we come, so this is a significant size tilt. Uh, whereas, and it will be calling itself a multi cap PMS and comparing itself with Nifty 500 TRI. Sure. In Nifty sure. 500, uh, small and mid caps, they have 20 to 25 percent allocation, whereas mm -hmm. uh, in a PMS size, uh, I have seen that they have significant size tilt. Uh, so basically, they don't compare themselves with the right benchmark. The third okay. point is the third point is uh, I have seen that PMSs they are doing basically systematic investing maybe something like value or maybe something like uh, quality or maybe something mm -hmm. like momentum but they are still comparing they are still comparing themselves uh, with let's say nifty 500 or a nifty mid cap index or whatever it is so they are they, the comparison is, is not with the right factor adjusted benchmark so okay. let's say in the US, if you if it's a small value uh, uh, SMA, so here PMSs are called SMA, separately managed accounts. So then sure. it has to compare itself with Russell 2000 value, which is the small yeah. value index. Or let's say, let's say if somebody is running large value strategy, a more relatable benchmark. <clears throat> Yeah, it has to compare itself with S&P 500 value. So you cannot compare yeah. yourself with S&P 500 
but let's say you right. are running a strategy of S&P 500 growth, right? You have a growth strategy okay. and then you say that you have generated alpha because you have beaten S&P 500. So that kind of uh, issue is my, my third point. That's a third okay. problem. So what what do you have to say on, on all these three Absolutely. Uh, points? Absolutely. Maybe in the same order. Perfect. So first you mentioned dividend, right? Now, typically, if you see Nifty or Nifty mid-cap, dividend in a year is a percent and a half. Half a percent to percent and a half. Right? Across, uh, if you see the dividend deal, as you would call it. Right? On this, given the rule change in the last two years, the dividend is tax, you're paying your marginal tax. Now, let's assume most people, let's assume most people will fall in the 30-35% bracket. So, you're paying half a percent as tax on your overall gains, right? The benefit, obviously, in a mutual fund is you're not paying that tax because dividend goes into the system and you'll only pay once you buy or sell or redeem the mutual fund. That might be after 10 years, whereas in a PMS, you have those capital gains coming in every year with a short-term profit loss, long-term profit loss, right? Definitely a disadvantage from the PMS in terms of tax efficiency. And hence, even more important to be able to decide whether in spite of this tax inefficiency, will you be able to make money? That's number one. Right. And the, the Second, declaration, hmm. they should be uh, declaring their uh, maybe uh, returns post taxes. Hmm. So let's say the turnover which happened inside a PMS, short term is fixed, which is 15, long term is fixed, which is 10, uh, above 1 lakh. So, yeah. so how the regulation is in the US that uh, the returns mm. after distribution, whatever they declare. So let's say in India, you assume short term 15, so, long term 10, and then you in assume fact, it is 30. So what is the return fact, after the taxes on distribution as compared to a buy sure. and hold index uh, investor of a comparable Absolutely. Strategy? 100%. So the, the simplest thing to do is assume worst case scenario. Ki sub short term hai, sub short term profit hai. So you'll pay 15% on return? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Post that, post that, are you still confident? that they'll be able to generate alpha. See, tax is an eventuality. Right? If mutual funds you're going to redeem at some point, let's assume, you'll pay that 10%. Let's say long term. Right? And are they able to beat the index? If you buy an index fund for that matter, you'll still pay 10%. Let's say in the longer term. But sir, or you, an are ETF, deferring, way you are deferring okay. that 10% in an index fund. Yeah. So the tax is also sure. getting compounded. Whereas in Absolutely. a PMS, you are paying it that is not. every year. So even if the tax rate is the same, uh, index Correct. fund will generate at least half a percent alpha compared to a comparable uh, PMS strategy just based on the tax deferral aspect? Definitely, Over no doubt years, about it. Maybe 15 years, 20 100%, years. 100%, 100%. My view is very simple. And please feel free to disagree with it. You have to identify a PMS which can at least make you a 5% alpha or higher. Post their fees. Right? Now, uh, if you were uh, uh, there in the earlier part of the call, there are multiple fee structures in a PMS, fixed, hybrid, or pure performance, as an example. Right? Those things are also very important. As an example, last year, there are some people who have paid fees of 5-6% in a PMS because of performance over the hurdle. Right? And now, it not might be agreeable to a lot of people, but that is what you signed up for. Either you knowingly signed up for it, were pushed by a wealth manager or your bank or some wealth outfit or whoever it is, or you said that look, if they make money, let them make also let them also make money. But when the five percent hit comes of taking performance, you might not be too happy, right? Uh, so definitely you have to take dividend. You have to take taxes which are real into account in all this decision making. Right? 
and after that all and only after that you are convinced that look he can still make me alpha should you put money in a pms or any other structure pms is just a structure in an ai how think that in how an do we decide that uh, the fund manager will generate uh, 5% alpha if we look at historical sure. performance it is mm-hmm. uh, as far as i have seen it is more akin to lottery the fund manager selection sure. than to uh, a particular process so let's say few years back uh, somebody else was having a sound investment process uh, at that point in yeah. time and then uh, before uh, those years somebody else was having now somebody else is looking uh, is look- absolutely let me let me try so, and understand let me try and explain this from my point of view right yeah that i think there are three mistakes that people make there are two three mistakes that people make first is buying into momentum of returns as you are saying people are only saying acha ye saal mein stallion has done very well or abacus has done very well or xyz has done very well let me buy that in fact if you search on the internet there is enough academic proof which says momentum of funds actually does not work consistently so if you buy the best performing funds and hold it for 2 3 4 years and keep doing that strategy you will actually underperform the market because there is mean reversion which occurs styles change in a cycle let's say in the in the current cycle small caps have done very well in march 2020 quality was doing very well in between around september 20 value mid cap was doing very well right so effectively if your objective is to just try and buy into or your style of investing is to buy into the best performing funds i can guarantee it's not the best thing because you're also setting your expectation or benchmarking your expectation to the best performance which is not base performance but that is best performance base performance is 15% so even though a fund might have made 100% last year when a client comes to me and asks me jay what is the expectation 15% it cannot be 100% and 15% if you hold it for 5 years right so we never talk at least from my perspective that this is going to be the best performing fund i have no bloody clue on that but i can tell you there's a very good chance if you talk and understand the philosophy of the fund see their past performance talk to all the stakeholders involved talk to current clients talk to past clients and understand how they've gone about how they communicate why they communicate the way they do is there sense in it what is their failures what is their winners what are their losers how often do they chew on the portfolio what is the cost what is the brokerage they give to their brokers you will realize that the chances of the probability and there is no guarantee of success zero but the probability of success is continuously increasing and you reach a point where you say i am willing to bet my hard on money with this particular person so do you think that philosophy is a is a state variable or does it change over time uh, based on i think has to be it has to remain constant for the simple reason let's say if i'm so going if to it is a if, constant uh, if, if mm-hmm. so uh, assuming it is constant uh, it is not a state variable it's uh, basically static variable with wherein you say philosophy so yeah uh, i can sim- can i i mean this is my, i'm just uh, putting up my questions uh, because i have not been really free interacting with pms fund manager so Uh, uh, no, <clears throat> can I simply uh, uh, take exposure of that philosophy systematically? So let's say, let's say Absolutely. somebody 100%. somebody has QGLP strategy, right? Uh, there is a yeah. fund house which is quality growth at reasonable price and yeah, uh, dark yeah longevity, right? So some some yeah, QGLP. Sure. Now today. i can go 
I can get the exposure and pick up that to factor at a low cost. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Yes, systematically. Absolutely. So that what what that is going to do is uh, that hmm. it's going to systematically, without any bias, implement that yes. factor uh, for me. Uh, without the need of any uh, fund manager so or that is exactly or, or what vanguard has done that. you are absolutely right that is what vanguard has done that they have said that look we are making a warren buffet portfolio this is his style more than anything else right he is looking at coke or railways or insurance companies in this manner this is what we codified and made it into a portfolio and we are giving it to you at 5 bips of cost more than anything else right as long as you think you are replicating a particular philosophy that i'm going to slightly disagree out here between philosophy and what you are talking about is what we call factors value is a defined factor momentum is a defined factor growth quality are defined factors you can say that look if it's growing at 20% if p by b is less than whatever it is or relatively etc or you know pick the top 10 stocks in momentum etc what you are talking about factor the difference between philosophy is with qualitative answers and quantitative answers factors can be made into a quantitative answer if however i talk to the management as an example and i just feel they are not going to grow fast because i have experience of talking to 20 management let's call right i might not buy that stock but that can never be made into a vanguard etf that is philosophy and yes there is definitely overlap between factors and philosophy no doubt about it a lot of popular people on uh, on small case as an example they've done exactly what you are saying that, right that they've made it into what are the cost is forget about that but they've made it into a strategy now what you are saying is can someone replicate that at a lower cost it is possible if it can everything that they're doing is quantifiable in a lot of cases it's not because a lot of their decisions are qualitative right so so do, do you think that or or rather uh, vijay ji do you can i ask one more question or yeah 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 go ahead go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. so so do you think that maybe the fund managers which have uh, direct contact uh, or, or rather which meet the managements or go on the ground maybe mm-hmm. that uh, qualitative aspect is 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 the one which which may be uh, one should definitely look at in picking up fund uh, let me put it this way let me put this way aspects can be yeah. let me put it this way right whether you're following the pharma french model whether you're doing the five factor model whether you're coming with your own factor right if you run a regression and you realize that none of the factors are significant what remains is what i would say the skill of the fund manager now that skill of the fund manager is can be as you are saying he goes to all the distributors of maruti to figure out before the maruti result come out right or goes and speaks to the management and has experience in talking to management understanding whether nahi ye to karke aayega ye buy kar do irrespective of price as an example for me and i was explaining this to some other gentleman who asked the question on india this qualitative aspect is very much possible in india to go there out there understand businesses which nobody is taking either the interest or inclination not from a quantitative so you can run go to screener and find out companies uh, based on uh, you know these popular can slim models and so many models are there like magic formula etc right and you can get those 20 stocks but within those 20 stocks in a country like india where data is not clean there definitely scope for improvement in mid caps and small caps where data is fudged for whatever reason or 
not reported or changed later for whatever reason that is where a lot of opportunity according to me is so if you ask me is there significant opportunity in large caps to do something like this i would say no is there significant opportunity increasing opportunity as you go lower in the value chain definitely however your excellent point uh, however excellent point. the risk is the risk is obviously increasing as well yeah uh, just just one thing uh, here so i mean this is a great point uh, and and uh, a different perspective uh, uh, i'm i'm sorry but i i researched the whole internet but i did not find any tool mm-hmm. wherein i can run the regression on on the indian uh, fund managers so maybe if you so, have something handy i'll tell you uh, so i don't think uh, you, no actually I'll, I'll, you know it might not be it might, might not be completely dated uh, this is no absolutely there are so just yeah. just hear me out Uh, if you just type in and I can send Vijay the link and he maybe he can forward it to you as well. But if you just type in Google, there is this uh, I forgot his name. There is a professor at IMA who maintains the premiums of momentum, growth, and value for every month. Right, Hello? I I know that I have uh, I have uh, read that link and I I read that uh, like every month. So, uh, sure. uh, so you that, can just but, take but download both. And thought, uh, so let's say. वो तो एक्सेल में करो ना. वो एक्सेल में होगा ना. But how do I find out uh, the loadings of the uh, of the PMS portfolio? How do I find out uh, find that out? It will be. By running the regression, you have the monthly. You, no, no, actually, you have the monthly data. Let's assume you have the monthly data. Of PMSs, do you have the monthly returns of PMSs, or which are PMSs you are trying to figure out? I can get that. That's not hard. But uh, uh, what after that? So just do the X Y regression in Excel. I'm sorry, I'm not. You will get the coefficients then, and you will get your loading, and you know whether each whether which factor is significant or not significant. Let's see output of regression, right? I need to. I can get the characteristic mm-hmm. of a single stock, but let's say somebody is having fifty stocks, right? So how do I know? You're not bothered with fifty stocks. That's the whole point of regression, right? You're not bothered with the fifty yeah. stocks. You're only bothered with his monthly returns. Let's call it his or her monthly return. If you have his or her how monthly returns and want to. Uh, How do I know the attributions of that that monthly return? So what? That is why you're running the regression, no? <laughs> <laughs> but, If, but okay, let let me let me let me try and put it this way. Let me let me try and give let me try and give a simpler explanation if I can, if you allow me. Right? What is beta at the end of the day? Is the regression of a stock against the index? Agreed? No, it's no? the okay. it 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 depends on which index you are taking. So maybe you are taking Nifty five hundred or Nifty total. No, no, I'm saying again which are index. See, no, if I'm even are, doing it is the it is the Nifty relative yeah. to uh, specifically Nifty total market or Nifty. No, no, I'm saying more. let's say if I want to regress Infosys over Nifty five hundred. For whatever reason, okay, right or wrong, I want to just regress Infosys over Nifty 500. There will be a number which comes out, which let's assume is significant of beta, let's call it, or slope, let's call it. Yeah, so that will that will tell me the loading of yeah, the, so that will tell me the loading of beta in the Infosys stock. Perfect, perfect, right? Now, if I remove yeah, Nifty yeah. 500. If I remove Nifty 500 and put in premiums of value, momentum, and growth instead of Nifty 500, and regress Infosys over these three time series, I'll get the loading and the significance of Infosys relative to each each of these factors. Okay, so you are saying 
that go to mm. the IIM, but but here we have a problem. Mm. How that mm. IIM Hamdavad professor is calculating? He is calculating mm. a long shot uh, premium, right? Now the fund yeah. manager is doing a long long only, right? So okay, how do you? I mean, it might be technical. Very situation. simple. <laughs> no, no, please. Okay. No, no, okay. not an issue. Very simple to do. Very simple to do. It takes. Okay. It'll take effort, right? You go to. You buy a software called MetaStock or Iris or whichever it is, which gives you historical data, right? That's number one. It's not available for free for sure, right? That's number one. You build. There's enough academic literature available. Let's say to remove the momentum premium, right? Let's say you only run a momentum strategy as you're saying long only. Of the top hundred stocks, let's call it, which you think uh, someone like a Deepak Shiva Capital Mine wants to, uh, he runs a momentum strategy. You want to see whether he's actually doing momentum or not, right? Or there's significant, uh, uh, significance loading to the momentum premium which is there. You can calculate how much a momentum strategy has given over an index, let's call it. Let's call it alpha, the premium of the long only strategy. You can do that in Excel. Then it should be relatively simple, right? Or you know, you can find no, you someone who's doing it in have, Python. No, 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 no. Yes. You need Sorry. to do. You need to have the historical data. But I mean, it is doable. That is what my initial point was. That uh, whatever is yeah. there, run the regression. Like in the US, there is just a mm-hmm. tool, portfoliovisualizer dot com. I go to portfoliovisualizer dot com. I enter the yeah. the fund ticker, and it regresses over right. it and give me the results that what are the loadings perfect uh, for perfect. for different uh, factors. So if, yeah. if we yeah. have something of that sort in in India, I mean, I well, can, I send I send opportunity. I send opportunity, right? Say I, there might be someone who's making this tool. Yeah. Right. But all I'm saying is, my question was that if, how do you ah, run sorry. regression? Do you have this this data, or do you collate this data, or is there a tool where everybody uh, maybe on this call can go? I make this and, data and on my own. PMS fund manager. It's not difficult to do. It's not at all difficult to do. Given given enough intention, given enough motivation, enough given enough incentive. It's a one-week job. So generally, do you check that for uh, the fund managers before uh, every month? Uh, okay, absolutely, of course. No, great. Absolutely, we have so to. Is, we have to this is the, for the, the simple reason. Yeah. For the simple reason, if I'm giving you, let's say, a momentum fund as an example, right? I have to make sure that the next fund that I'm recommending is not overlapping with already the recommendation that I'm giving you or what you already have in your portfolio at a fund level. Yeah, I mean this is this is superb if you are uh, like doing the fund manager regression every month and then based on that, uh, that is an input to your. No, I need to. I need to. Great. I need to earn my living as well. I need to differentiate myself as well. It's impossible in my line of work to be able to say, "Sir, up, ye fund le lo," because it has done well in the last year. This thing, Jay, why would I need you? But if I can explain to him why this fund is a great addition to his portfolio, based on what he already has, that's very interesting for him. Or her. So, do you do you generally see statistically significant uh, uh, unexplained loadings, uh, uh, which which are generating alpha in in no, India? A lot of PMSs, a lot of PMSs, unfortunately, don't do what they say. The presentation versus the output, which is there, or the Output of return, which is there, does not match with what they say. 
and the reason also could be varied is that your definition of value is very different from mine your definition of momentum is very different from mine what is momentum right i could be looking at 3 months momentum you could be looking at 6 months momentum which i could be looking at 12 months momentum cg could be looking at 18 months momentum and all of us are right just because pharma fan defines it at 12 months doesn't mean momentum is 12 months it from pharma fan did not define momentum but no no i'm saying the three factor one i agree to your uh, i'm sorry the three factor one where the momentum gets added yeah. No, no, no. That that one, Pharma French did not define that. That was uh, that is. Are they uh, the extension of Pharma French? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mike Mike sure. Carhart uh, was was the one. Anyway, correct. So, but you sure. are right. Uh, you are right. That's that's true. That uh, the the definition of of uh, it's it's different for for different uh, folks. In fact, the signals are also might also. Absolutely, be and if you if you just do if you just run. uh and we did this when we were at it right if you just run 6 months momentum versus 12 months momentum they are very different results but it's still momentum uh, uh, yeah uh, could i come in between for a minute uh jay if you are comfortable we could uh, bring in srinivasan next and uh, then we'll wrap because it's already nearly 2 uh, hours and uh, for 20 minutes sure. sure yeah thank you so thank you jay sir and thank you cg sir ha ah, yes gorav yeah thank you jm thank you uh, cg sir this was very very helpful and you gave me so much time so maybe such a detailed discussion i i really appreciate uh, that thank you so much thanks a lot gorav thanks a lot and uh, uh with your permission jay sir i'll take uh, srinivasan sir for the last question and then we'll wrap up please 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 um, uh, thank right, you uh, it's nice to, yeah, nice to have the last thing um, i'm going back to slightly a previous discussion uh, you know talking about uh, index funds versus that so one part is yeah. that uh, you know i i mean it's just a comment right my question comes later is that you know people always keep asking you know stocks or mutual funds right and i always ask them why can't why why does it have to be the or right why can't it be both right and that's that's just a comment yeah. right uh, yeah my uh, main question was um, while talking about uh, funds and i mean this can apply to bms this applies to mutual funds too you gave a very long list of factors right using which somebody should select the fund and definitely yeah. recent performance was definitely not in your top list right but in fact this is exactly what most retail investors do right sure. or they at the best they go with the the rating uh, ranking that is given by many of the portals which again looks at yeah. for the equity most of the portals look at 3 year performance so obviously 3 years is reasonably short yeah. period right uh, if you are looking at long term so how would you you know uh, what would you concisely tell a retail investor like something that they can okay. do something like screener i mean i, I mean screener is stock but i understand but i'm saying something like that sure. which has a slightly better chance of uh, you know chance of selecting the reasonably Absolutely. good set of funds thank you absolutely uh this the answer to this unfortunately requires effort that's number one if you're willing to put in the effort there's a checklist and i'll send vijay we we've made a very small 3 minute video on how we pick mutual funds or any fund for that matter right the effort requires you to talk to the management and management more often than not are continuously giving interviews they're continuously hosting sessions they're continuously doing investor programs more often than not second talking to the cio who is doing something similar fund manager you see go to linkedin and you see how long the fund manager i i give an example I, and it just pains me to see this one of the largest small cap funds which has done well the cio has left 3 and a half years back and started his own pm on what basis are you saying that this particular fund 
will do well when the CIO who is driving the fund has left three years back. In a small cap fund, it takes a humongous amount of time if your AUM is big to churn your portfolio. In fact, I would say the new fund manager of that particular fund is only beginning to introduce his style now after three years. But people are looking at seven years history. I'm saying, "Are you a fund manager? CIO, you have gone away, right?" So just basic checks: Is the AUM optimal to run a small cap strategy? If your fund size is thirty thousand crores in India, small cap fund is impossible to run with flexibility and liquidity. Impossible. Just look at the depth. You don't even need an expert. आप एन एस सी के वेबसाइट पर जाओ लुक एट इज पोर्टफोलियो एंड जस्ट आस अ सिंपल क्वेश्चन हाउ मेनी इन हाउ मेनी डेज विल ही बी एबल टू सेल इज पोर्टफोलियो इफ द आंसर इज मोर देन वन आर टू डेज ऑफ अ सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पोर्टफोलियो इन अ डाउन मार्केट इफ दे सी लॉट ऑफ रिडेमशन प्रेशर यूर स्कूड चेक वेदर द फंड मैनेजर इज न्यू और नॉट चेक वेदर द फंड मैनेजर इज मैनेजिंग लार्ज कैप मिड कैप स्मॉल कैप मल्टी कैप फ्लेक्सी कैप और ओनली डूंग स्मॉल कैप Check on their communication. Are they clearly communicating what they are doing? Check on the sales team. Are you getting good representation from them? Then come to performance, not point to point. Check one year, three year. Check consistency of alpha over a rolling three year period. This is effort, unfortunately. You have to go to M C, download the nav, go to maybe investing dot com, download the benchmark. Check what the three-year rolling period is on a daily, monthly basis. Check for drawdowns. Calculate sharps on your own across month, across weeks. Calculate Calmer. Calculate how how much time do they take to recover from drawdown compared to the benchmark. If you do all these things, you will realize that a lot of the funds don't qualify. a lot of them it's and i'm i'm telling you i'm i'm no rocket scientist i'm just putting in effort which you cannot or are unwilling because of your day job or because you think you don't understand what i'm doing is not rocket science i'm telling you up front i tell all my clients first you only hire me if you think you cannot do it and this is how you do it You cannot buy a mutual fund just based on A to B returns over three years, as you said, rating. It's shown you are bound to underperform. But if you are willing to take that effort, and that effort has to be consistent, it cannot be a one-time effort. When a bank salesperson comes to sell you, he is trying to sell you a five-year-old story. Five-year story. If you are up, five years, so jai. Your pendra taka kagar ban jayega. But his incentives are linked every six months of his targets. कि आप बेच के आओ इसको. And most people are, including me, are greedy. To whatever extent you want to be greedy too. And hence we want to buy into dreams. कि अरे नहीं बोला है तो अच्छा ही होगा. मेरे को तो आता नहीं है. But if you are willing to take that effort and go through the motions, go through the processes, you will realize that the probability again. Of beating the market, beating inflation, beating peers is higher, but definitely not guaranteed. And as Vijay would also say, and every investor, every trader who at least be in the market for five six years will say, investing, trading, or doing anything in the market is extremely difficult. There is no free lunch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Jay. Uh, I, there are, I think, uh, three more people. Uh, though we had said Srinivasan sir is the last. Uh, maybe we'll wrap it up as quickly as possible. Rupal. Sure. Are you are you there, Rupal? Uh, Himanshu. Himanshu, are you there? Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah. I've been here for pretty long, and I see Jay is extremely patient. I have just one request. 
the last question of Srinivasan Sir's and Jay's answer. I think if you could somehow make this available, I don't care if it's just a transcript. I think that was what I wanted to know because I've been looking at this for a long time and I have my bankers come to me and they always, exactly what Jay said, they're always trying to, you know, and I always ask them, I said, boss, your bonus is coming <laughs> but the thing is that in India, what I've observed, unfortunately, is that the availability of data is a big issue everywhere. And uh, No, I'll disagree. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt out here. I'm going to interrupt. Yeah. Data is available freely. You go to ANSI, yeah. you will get NAV historical of any fund on demand. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, uh, you know, somebody Piche was ask, was maybe making a comment that, you know, in US, the, the, there's a site, we simply go and they tell you everything. And then in US, this happens. US, this happens. Okay, it doesn't happen in India. What you just said, that if in India, you want to make money through this, then you have to do the legwork, so to speak, that you have to go ahead. And so when people come to sell you things, you know, this has been happening. We've been seeing it with mutual funds. And now I, I see every two-bit TV and cinema actor trying to push crypto, you know. So sure. here everybody is tried, you know, everybody tries to push you into a trend, you know, and everybody tries to bank on your greed. So when you're actually trying to invest with serious money and you don't have that much effort, so you try to go to a PMS or something. Now, at that point of sure. time, how do you, specifically for PMS, how, uh -huh. how or where? Where can you go to find out this kind of background? My point exactly. Very simple. Is that look at this guy. You know, Very simple. So returns in the past five years. But that's Third the of the future, right? Third Third those those Very simple. I'll just say, I'm just unfortunately repeating what I just said. Uh, yeah. In some, just parts of it along the call. Sure. One, you have to make it simple. If you don't understand his philosophy, yeah. after meeting him or her, don't invest. Yeah, sure. Because either he or her doesn't know what he's doing, and or you don't invest, you don't understand. So to me. Yeah. it doesn't make sense. What should the fifth? Hmm. Right? Right. Second, ask them for something which makes them talk to your current client or their current client. Okay. Okay. Right? See what their experience has been. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Third, and I'm completely biased when I say this, find a good advisor who you can trust with your hard earned money. Because there's a very good chance you have a day job. You don't have time to sit two hours with a fund manager doing a review Absolutely. every 15 days, every month, etc. But the like, fees that you pay, in my mind, and please understand that I'm very biased when I'm saying this, should be worth it. I tell all my clients that, look, if you're paying me X, I at least have to make you 4X to justify Correct. my presence to you. Absolutely. That brings me to my next question. Because... I've never really been, my dad used to do this before for, for me, so I never really paid attention to stock markets and all of this. And now that I have to do it, you know, I sometimes feel lost. And I say, yeah, paisa mein business mein lagata hon, you know, I just don't want to. But the thing is, but the thing is that, that this whole thing about advisors, I, I'm presuming you are one because I, I entered this conversation just an hour back. So I guess, you know. Uh, no I am one, yes. Okay, fine. How do I find one? I mean, how do I find somebody like you? What do I do? do very I simple. Very simple if you ask me. Very simple. If you ask me, you have to ask five questions to any advisor, including me. Okay. Right? Right. Credibility hmm. is one. Is he just someone who's been hired by the bank or does he come with something where you've talked to, he's come through a reference? Saying that, nay, he's been with me for five years. This is what he's done. This is how he behaves. This is the service that I got. Credibility. Second, yeah. recognition. Right? Okay. Is there some external recognition, either in a company that he's worked with, as a wealth manager, bank manager, bank RM, whatever it is, that he's mm -hmm. got, preferably external and not internal. Internal, as you might be aware. Of course. Oh, sub it, everyone gives awards to everybody. Sure, of course. Right? Instead of bonuses, they say, yeah, award, you feel happy. And most people do. Right? Yeah. 
yeah. heard his experience is he actually making logical sense based on the experience at level 2 or level 3 or is he just parroting sales material right fourth is success has he ever have you again this sort of refers to the reference that do you know he's made money or is he just saying he's made money yeah so how so does an example how does he prove it to me so there are references that you have to talk to you say give me two three clients that i can call yeah if he's ready to give back again to the references whether it's the advisor or the pms yeah, somebody who knows absolutely money, should be confident enough to say okay here are these five people you can call absolutely. them absolutely check up check and ask whatever question what yeah okay absolutely absolutely right just make sure the surnames are not the same as the rm and the person is <laughs> giving it to right uh, and last is how transparent is that person right is he only giving you one particular fund that he wants to give you is he giving you multiple options with multiple fee structures right and saying that look these are the three options we can do at your convenience or is he setting a timeline ki sir आप अभी डालो आपका मनी डबल हो जाएगा राइट ओके राइट इफ यू आज दिस फोर फाइव क्वेश्चन अगेन देर इज नो गारंटी बट अ लॉट ऑफ चेक मार्क्स आर चेक मार्क्स एंड देन देर इज डेफिनेटली सम अमाउंट ऑफ लक की यू स्टार्टेड लाइक आई हैव क्लाइंट्स हू यू नो पुट इन मनी लेट से इन जैन राइट एंड द पोर्टफोलियोज आर फोर फाइव परसेंट डाउन Right. Oh, that that's okay. I mean, you want to come to the stock market, you cannot. Uh, I'm just saying, there's luck. Sure. Right. There's some clients who invested in April 2020s. They think I'm a rock star. I'm not. Yeah. Of course. No. No. I I understand that. No. So uh, one more question. I'm really sorry. I know this is this is really stretched. No. Go for it. Okay. So. Uh, So most of the people who've come to me, and I'm just talking about myself because I've started looking at the last few years, uh, yeah. they've usually been from the banks that that yeah. we, we have our accounts in, right? Or somebody sure. who's left one bank and gone to the other. So he says, "Sir, I've come to this bank," right? <laughs> so, yeah. so the only person I I get to encounter is then the the, the relationship manager, or I, let's say one guy above him. who come sure. to me you know all dressed up and you know wealth advisor or whatever whatever yeah yeah in a fancy suit i'm i'm yeah exactly so i'm just saying that so that's just one you know that's like the banks business you know yeah. they hired this guy sure. to to bring my money into the bank and get it you know whatever commissions or whatever but there are people who are doing this independently as well right sure yeah so how do i go about finding them I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm so, sure this is a stupid question but I'm No it's not a stupid, question. Not a stupid question it's not a, yeah, yeah there are no stupid questions at all <laughs> uh if you see the the brute force way is you go to amphi you put in your pin code and they'll give you all the advisors closest to you okay that's brute force you don't know anybody out there correct right. correct but you put in your pin code let's say 4002026 it'll tell you yeah. plus or minus where your advisors are some of them might have stopped some of them might not be advising whatever it is but the best way to do it is yeah. to ask within your circle of whether colleagues friends yeah. family who are you using right they might say no we are using the bank short those guys right mm. third is let's say tomorrow you know vijay does so many calls with so many people yeah right talk to those people there's no harm in talking and most people will be willing to talk to determine whether you meet the criteria for you do they meet the criteria etc correct what are the criteria are hmm hmm right and then take a call what's the hurry most people are in a hurry to make money yeah well right and it's your people come to me they're like oh we are going to miss this opportunity as a boss correct 
So no, exactly. These are the things that make me a little skeptical. You're asking me, I I believe PMS the the minimum limit is fifty lakhs, right? That's how you enter. That's right. So like That's you're right. telling me to put in write you a check of fifty lakh rupees. Please don't tell me that tomorrow the car will fall. If it falls, then I'm going to be angry. You know, money is also. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. See, unfortunately, um, and I have to say this: the business that I am in is a dirty business. It is driven by incentives. It is driven by you buying something that you probably don't want. Some extremely bad experience with people. Uh, after I put in a specific instruction to not for you know, people to not go to my parents, and they've come yeah. home and they came came and met me in the office and I told them, "Fine, I'll look into it." Hmm. You know, and then the next morning, maybe at ten thirty, eleven, when I'm not in the house, they came home and they well, said, and my, and my dad asked that, "Have you talked to my son?" He says, "Yes, yes, our son meeting with you." So that was like, you know, Ashwatthama, Narova, Kunjarova, Admi, Mara, Hathi, Mara. Baat to hua. But again, but again, right? See, you have to, you have to also understand there is no reputation to lose. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just saying that. You know that puts you off to begin with. Hundred percent, it has to. It's it has to. And now, you know, so so then, for me, when I was listening to you guys, and then I believe you had a huge, long, long conversation, which took me back to my, uh, you know, masters of finance days, regression analysis, yeah. and all that. Because now that's what I'm pointing at. Now, when you have somebody. To to do this for you because i'm very clear that if you're doing your own job or business or a job you don't have yeah. time to do that that's why you're ready to pay somebody for his expertise and also absolutely. his time right absolutely absolutely like any so other business or any other service so, yeah so my first step is that how do you actually go about finding these people and in india what out of your experience not easy no not easy you know? so i yeah. you know the five things that i mentioned it's not easy Yeah. I would say ninety nine. I would say ninety five percent, not ninety nine. Let's put ninety five percent of my business, right, yeah. comes from references and word of mouth. Correct. Me so, telling you, I'm the the best fund manager in the world is not going to count for shit. Yeah. But if Vijay tells you that boss, up Jai ke pas jao. Hmm. Yeah, right. You are not even going to look at my credentials. No, I understand, and that and that also, and there's also one more thing, and I may be absolutely wrong here because may I may not know, but I've noticed people who live in I don't know Bombay and Gujarat, that place, they have these networks. You know, it seems that those guys have been investing like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so. I just I just stop you there. We've opened up an office in Coimbatore in the last two months. Yeah, well, fine. I'm I'm from Delhi, right? Okay. <laughs> and yeah. here, everybody, if you have money, you just put it in your own business, and that's it. You know. And Fair. so, so you know, I, I see that because when I go to work in Bombay and I meet with people from my own, I see that people there, the general level of awareness and availability of information, references, you know, network. It's like it's uh, there, definitely. Yeah. Going, buying jewelry in Delhi, buying jewelry in Bombay, totally different. Sure, sure, sure. absolutely. Bombay yeah, yeah. Jayega, lose anything, jayega, you know, anything which involves trust. Money yeah. Yeah. should only be done to references if you are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, It's the fortunate okay. truth of the business that we are in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank. Hey, Himanshu, I, uh, Himanshu, this uh, conversation is entirely recorded, so you can always go yeah. back uh, to Market Mirror and uh, get uh, if you missed out something or if you need something, it is available there. Uh, Market so, Mirror. Yeah, okay. this, this is the, this actually, the room. I just entered around an hour back, so yeah, it doesn't matter. This is the room. Market mirror is the room. So market mirror. This okay, is the topic, right. and you can uh, uh, get the recording. Uh, Jay, okay. I think we'll take last two more questions, and uh, probably we are running sure. time and, uh, much yeah. beyond. Thank studio. you very much. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Uh, Himanshu. Thanks, uh, thank you very much on that. Uh, Sagar, you're there. Hi, sir. Yeah, kindly go Hi, ahead and uh, uh, ask a question or something. So basically, I was a newbie. Uh, just now, I had, I had entered the mutual funds co- concept to invest. So I had started SIP since a long two years back. Uh, so, sir, my thing is uh, to make to to study a fundamental or technical analysis. There is a websites of there is a websites for for stocks, right? 
like uh, individual stocks like uh, for example screener so okay. but particularly for a mutual funds to make a research so and so pin to pin data to collect uh, perfect uh, perfect information any website mm-hmm. which is mc make a research mc mc a m f i association okay. of mutual funds in india they have all the data on any mutual fund okay so, and uh, let's say tomorrow you want to go in more detail to a mutual fund right yes, go to the let's say you want to learn about the kotak uh, large cap fund i'm just saying as an example right yes, yes, go to the kotak mf website they'll have all the information read the key information memorandum read the sid right they have a lot more information than people unfortunately don't want to read but that is where the research comes in right research is not going to money control sorting by three years and saying oh look kota class cap is the best performing fund that's not research mm-hmm. that's data yeah, yeah that's one that's one okay yeah, what so but mcn and what the are... individual websites is what you should go to okay uh, uh, top 3 bullet points sir top 3 bullet checklist uh, checklist points sir to to find a best mutual fund sir like uh, not, not about the uh, rate of interest sure. rate of interest absolutely so details on the fund manager due diligence on the fund manager due diligence on the management due diligence on the investment team through linkedin is it optimal aum is it very expensive compared to peers is the fund manager looking at only one fund or five funds thank you sir thank you and then you come to performance and look at multiple yeah thanks agar uh, i want there. to say something and uh, bread will i last bread to ask the last question shankar okay bread you would like to say something hello okay uh, cg then we'll close it hmm? Uh, yeah you right. says, want to say something yeah yeah just, just sir formal thanks to jayesha for taking out time and uh, interacting so candidly with us and uh, replying to all the all us audience patiently uh, thank uh, thank you so much and uh, if uh, vijay sir if you don't have anything announcement for the next week i'll take your permission and close yeah just one minute yeah first of all let yes. me thank jay jay it has been a really a learning experience at least for me i'm sure it is a learning experience for a lot of people uh, i think uh, facets which we didn't know uh, have come through uh, this discussion and uh, what you spoke uh, so when i said mind your money tips from a hedge fund manager i think people have got lots of tips uh, and uh, i think you have articulated it so well uh, it is well worth the time in fact this is the longest uh, running uh, a uh, program which we have had ever i think so uh, and also we got a reasonably good audience about 600 people have come uh, seen it and it's complete it's a uh, completely recorded so i think uh, there should be no problem for people who do who not come they can always uh, hear it and by word of mouth it will spread and maybe we'll get a uh, lot of people hearing the recording uh, you have taken time more than nearly 3 hours um and uh, i hope you really had a good dinner because i'm sure you must be very hungry and tired <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to go and have a drink now so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so i think you deserve one i think you deserve one uh thank you no no it was time. quite enjoyable uh, and thank you uh, you know to you and your entire uh, set of people and your audience for listening to me for 3 hours yeah thank you once again uh, and cg you do the honors of uh, closing uh, good night Thank you sir good night. Okay good night see you good night